Well, when I watch it again, I'll have to listen specifically for Skywalker Seed. Hello, and welcome to Vassals of Kingsgrave for our Star Wars, uh, The Last Jedi, Everyone Dies kind of um, review discussion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, spoilers. I'll put that in. <laughs> They're all dead. They're all dead. Just everyone's dead. Um, it, it happens. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, this film was directed by Ryan Johnson who uh, you probably, if you've seen any of his other work, you'll probably remember uh, Looper. That was an interesting movie, and he also directed uh, a few excellent episodes of Breaking Bad. So I was pretty excited when I heard that uh, he was attached to this. Maybe not as excited anymore, but that's okay. That's okay. You guys can talk me off the ledge. Um, my name is Adam, also known as Drown Snow on the podcast of Ice and Fire Forums, and I am joined by Michal. Hey, I'm Inka Rain on the podcast by and Fire Forums, and probably confused forever. <laughs> uh, Patrick? Greetings. Doth Toll. Patrick and the Toll in the forums. <laughs> uh, Katie? This is Katie, Lady Griffin on the forums, and I don't really care about Star Wars, but I like this film. Well, alrighty then. Um, Duncan? Hey, this is Duncan, uh, also known as Valkyrus on the forums. And Hannah, are you are you with us, Hannah? Yeah, it's Shadow Baby, aka former Star Wars fan. As of Thursday oh. night. Oh, that's, 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 that's a little harsh. harsh. <laughs> that's pretty no, harsh. I'm probably gonna word. I'm probably gonna cut that part out. Cut that part out. Okay. Um, it grounds salted. Uh, <laughs> I, I've yeah, got I like uh, Man, so I feel like doing the the kind of standard, you know, ratings thing is pointless here. I feel this... like we should do lemon cakes and we should just like react in like six words or less. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Interesting. Or maybe I would have given it like all, all the ports. All the ports. Um, how many barbecued ports? Yeah. Well, Michal, tell me. How, well, how did you enjoy this film? Uh, I don't know yet. I'm still trying to figure it out. And I don't know how I feel. I wish I felt better about it. And I don't feel better about it. But I also didn't despise it. And I am hopeful that with time, I will come to appreciate it. Because I have a lot, a lot, a lot of friends who, like, adored the movie. So I don't think that it's like a prequel where it's like, oh, this is only going to get horrible, more horrible the more times you watch it. I think that it's, I, there's definitely potential there. Plus, these are Star Wars movies, so we live with them, right? right. Like, they're not, like, they're, they're not static. They're, they're things that we, by definition, as Star Wars fans, incorporate into our lives you know, in, in over time. So while I'm, I, I think my worst feeling is that I came out of a Star Wars saga movie not loving it. And that, that feeling is almost worse than like any other part of it. Um, but I haven't, I haven't fallen to the dark side or anything. There is still hope. The, well, that is uh, that was beautiful. The message of this movie, kind of. <laughs> uh, oh, I don't even. Well, know. that's it for the vast um, of King's Grace. So. <laughs> this can be your yeah. therapy session, Mihal. Uh, yeah, I, th- <laughs> I did a two-hour podcast on Friday, and I still don't know how I feel. Well, the oh, first God. of many, I feel like, many sessions. I feel like that's it right there. I feel like that's the. the that's that's it. Like you did a two-hour podcast, and you still don't know how you feel. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I think like we we could all give like kind of like a tagline or an alternative headline or like if we were writing a review, what what would the title of our review be for this movie? It would and be my, good yeah, movie. Shut up, fans! Stop complaining. It ruled. End. I loved it. I hated it, and then I loved it again. And 
now I don't know how I feel. So I I kind of agree with Katie. I think it's it it's not fair all the flack he's getting. I think I think a lot of the things I've been alluded to in either games, previous games that n- are no longer uh, canon but still exists. Uh, and uh, through the Rebels, which is canon. Uh, so, I don't know. Yeah, I, I feel like I've see, I've read a lot of the criticism online and the stuff that people are reacting to, and a lot of the stuff that people hate is not the stuff that is bothering me, okay. um, which is weird. So, like, because uh, there's been a, there's it seems like people either love or hate what Luke does at the end, or they love or hate. You know, uh, Carrie Fisher not dying in like the first five minutes. Um, yeah, and I don't have a huge problem with either of those. Like, I think they were fine. So, yeah, I don't know. What do you think, Duncan? Um, I liked it more than Rogue One, but less than The Force Awakens. I think its main problem is how much it drags in the middle. It's a long movie and it feels long. And yes. Um, unfortunately, the pace and tones of the different plots often feel incongruous. However, I do think it brings it all together perfectly for the final act, which like had me on the edge of my seat the whole time. Pacing issues mm. aside, I think the film is an incredible sensory experience. I think Johnson paints yeah. with like these really intense, vibrant colors. He's able to build tension and drama into this kind of really almost unbearable chaos, but then he, he'll sort of pivot and it crystallize it into these really sort of sublime moments of sort of silence and symmetry um and i actually watched it twice um, oh God, you just did i did alliteration I, while you were speaking sorry <laughs> no i'm so impressed <laughs> uh, okay I, I accidentally watched it twice because like <laughs> a friend of mine wanted to go again so accidentally um, so, yeah, I didn't mind. I didn't protest too much. But watching it a second time, I actually think the film does a better job than previous Star Wars films of actually kind of visualizing the Force as this this sort of constant energy that, that surges between and connects all of the characters. Um, it's a really sort of brilliant, complicated visual film. And... Yeah, so it's a weird, it's it's a weird film. It's different. It's challenging, and I think it cares much more about like the dramatic and emotional logic of the scenes rather than the actual logic, as a lot of people have pointed out. Definitely. But I still think it's a very, it's a very worthy entry in the series. So, I'll give it. Um, yeah, I, I didn't. I wasn't as into it as The Force Awakens, so I'll give it a bit less than that. I'll give it like three point seven five uh, tasty barbecued porks. I bet it was so tasty, but we'll never know because Chewie decided to. <laughs> He he doesn't want to eat the thing he just killed and cooked. Um, <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah, I don't I don't even know I don't even know what to do with that. Uh, yeah, I think I think one thing you said you know definitely stands out is that like the human moments, the character interactions, like are are great. Like there's a lot of great acting. There's a but all, if if you take these scenes like out of the film, you're like, oh, this is great. That's great. It's just like everything it's framed around him, like wanted to make my head explode, you know, just like the whole um, just the whole f- fucking fact that it's a it's it's a slow chase in space for like <laughs> they're I, very I, slowly getting away. <laughs> <laughs> like none of that makes any sense. Uh, I just I was so excited too when the movie started. I was so excited. And, there's, you know, uh, they're escaping the planet and they blow up this dreadnought. And there's this huge, you know, huge sequence. And then when it gets to the point where it's like, oh, they're getting away slowly. And I'm like, wait, what the fuck just happened? Um, oh, like, I thought, OK, they can track them through hyperspace. I'm like, OK, so they're going to have to jump all over the place. It's Battlestar Galactica. But instead, yeah, that's what I thought. They they like Kylo comes out with the spaceships and basically cripples them. And then they call him back to slowly chase them from from the, the rear and it's like uh we can't prote- we can't protect you out there but they really couldn't fight back at that point and the first order is basically a slave army so they have thousands probably of, of fighters and bombers they could just send and end it within about 10 minutes so i don't know why they suddenly care about the lives of their men whatever i don't know i mean i don't think that uh, the first order is that large of a number but I don't, know. I don't care that much about it. Well, specific. I mean, but like they had, I don't know, they had like what, 
five or six star destroyers and then Snoke's giant triangle ship. So that and the whole trip to Fancy Planet felt like was completely unnecessary. So that I loved <laughs> fake uh, Monte Carlo in space. I loved it. That part that part of the movie felt the most tactile, and I guess that's one complaint I have about the Last Jedi is that. Even though I didn't like The Force Awakens more than this movie, I felt like, uh, like, shit, who directed it? Ryan Johnson. No, no, The Force Awakens. J.J. Abrams. J.J. Oh, Abrams. I feel like he's a bit more of a tactile director and that things feel more weighted and grounded in his movie in a way that's really hard to explain. But, like, that movie felt kinetic in a way that this one feels a little more flubbery. <laughs> A little more, like the CGI in a lot of, in some places just didn't work for me. But the Monte Carlo stuff in space that, like that was fun. Like that was just a fun romp, which is really sort of what I want out of these movies. As someone who has no concern or care for the larger lore implications, uh, it didn't. It, it doesn't mess mesh with the, the emotional or, or the narrative cohesion of the rest of the film. But I also just didn't care that much because it was. A lot of fun and we got benicio del toro's character who was great it's a good year for uh, sexy men and very true mm. oh my gosh it's gonna be coat cast part three I know. <laughs> yeah in general i think the, the movie itself is visually stunning um i like especially the the usage of red in in a lot of the very vibrant colors uh, red in most in most cases, but also the gold of the gambling city. Um, and yeah, just generally just, yeah, all the colors were very nice. And the story for me um, seem, seems to be amping up towards, well, a new era, which is basically what, what they've been saying that this is going to be. This, these three movies are uh, telling the story of, of the new generation. So, yeah. So I'm, I was very happy with the way they did it. Uh, I was confused by one uh, yeah, event, which we can get into a little later, uh, mainly just because I don't know how they'll get out of that pickle, uh, you know, filming-wise. But... Uh, but yeah, I really liked it. I was I would give it four point five out of five um, uh, Master Codebreakers. Yeah, and we never really did find out like he he wasn't the Master Codebreaker. Uh, I don't think. Uh, so. I mean, it doesn't matter. I don't. I think he was I just think... happened to be there, or he was planted there. Or... I'm not sure what that was about. But then again, Mas Kanata, when she gives advice, she doesn't give straightforward advice. So she might have said, said that you need to look for that guy, but that would put you in jail with that guy. So Right, right. I, I, I thought there was going to be some sort of thing where he was going to, you know, uh, remark about how he lost his trademark, you know, pin or something to some guy. And that's yeah. Why he was in prison. Or, and I go, oh, okay, it makes sense. But I mean, it doesn't matter. I just. Yeah. Okay. When this movie opens up, it's, I mean, this is like right after the events of the last movie, right? Like within a day or so, probably, it seems. Uh, I can't really tell for sure, but uh, Finn is still in a coma and they're trying to evacuate the planet. And it seems like the First Order just immediately hopped over there. So, you know, hours perhaps. Um, yeah, is that is that about where you guys expected expected this to pick up well not what i expected it to pick up but uh, i also don't really think that it's right after i think it might have been like a week or so uh just because just yeah i don't know it feels i don't know maybe it is right after but uh it seems like they didn't have they didn't have much time to evacuate like they were they knew their base was compromised in the last movie and they were trying to evacuate probably immediately. So yeah. however long that takes, I don't know. Um, I yeah. mean, I sort of expected that it would open up on a short sequence and then we get to, you know, Ray and Luke. But I think, how long did it take before we actually got to uh, to that lightsaber handoff? Like, 
20 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that? Uh, no, I think it was like 10 minutes. It was yeah. less than that? Okay. It's, I mean, it, that to me was one of the best paced parts of the movie, actually. Like the opening mm-hmm. battle. Yeah, yeah, it was, was great. Like really riveting. And I, so I had our our dear fellow podcaster, Bina007, um, had obviously seen the movie before us Americans, uh, and she did not like it. <laughs> <laughs> so she didn't write any spoilers or anything but she did write her feelings on facebook so at which point my anticipation well, well my like fears like shut up through the roof um and i spent the next day like yeah. really really nervous um so i was actually quite heartened by the opening sequence because it felt very star wars and very um like mm. brutal but but also so uh I like that that nice balance of of human and uh, like and military that Star Wars when it's done right can do really well. Yeah, it managed to create a little story in a matter of minutes. Like you got invested in these characters, and in particular this this character that doesn't even speak, who's trying to like who's the last kind of hope for the mission and is trying to loose these bombs and like that it creates such great tension and, and like you've got the strategy from Leia's point of view and she's um, arguing with Poe about the, this, you know, how the mission's going and, and this person's in the middle of it trying to release the bombs and it's just like, it just merges those elements so well and the, like the kineticism of it is brilliant. You really feel like you're rattling and vibrating through this space and as like the TIE fighter, as like the um, X-Wing rushes past the windows where the commanders are looking like the you can feel like the sh- like the, the mm. glass almost you know shaking it just you, especially in the cinema setting you could really feel the intensity of that scene um and yeah it was just like it's just like what i was talking about before just like the way it sort of swells all of these different elements that are all competing against one another and then it just kind of brings them to this perfect point where the bombs drop and it just goes to silence and and blows up it was just really well done and just like this self-contained scene was so such a great sort of opening. Hmm. Yeah, and I like the uh, the way that lent into because we know that Poe Dameron in the first movie was basically heralded as like as like the best pilot ever to not have force powers or had not have obvious force powers, right? Uh, he seems like supernaturally good at, at flying that X-wing, uh, but very quickly after that first ac- evacuation scene, we see how he only basically is good at that, and that gives him this false confidence, and that's his story arc: how he's supposed to become the new general or commander of of the rebellion sort of and that was quite obvious i mean it was pretty much uh stated that this is your new story arc uh, and i liked it yeah i like post journey in the movie i just wish that it had taken less time <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of this movie I, yeah, I just wish we'd had 45 minutes less of it or maybe maybe 40 minutes less. I I think a lot like I just kept being like, wait, we're going. And I knew that I obviously had knew a lot about the movie going in. So I was like, we haven't even gotten to create yet. How long have we been sitting here? Oh, my God. But Poe, Poe's journey is great. So it has a really, um, uh, I don't know, a, a meaningful arc, I think. And, and one that's very, I'm sure not intentionally, but but. Um, very relevant to current climate conversations and stuff like that. And my mm. takeaway is that Poe Dameron is a dangerous idiot who needs to be thrown in the brig and left <laughs> there. They kind of should have done that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he's he's cute, so... <laughs> he's, he's like... so dreamy. <laughs> so all, even, even, like, even, like yeah, even the other women. Like to a human body. <laughs> Well, but I mean, he's he's so good as a pilot. You're like, you can't afford not to have him. Well, he also it? it's not like he has bad ideas. Like his his plans, he has some good plans. It's just that he is he doesn't care about the consequences as long as the ultimate outcome is victory, which yeah. is a theme I think through the movie and like what you value is it is it is it victory no matter the cost, which is where Poe is, or is it like no you you actually value the lives of the people who are fighting and you focus on right. on that. But, 
he's just not the guy that you send to lead the attack, right? Like you sent him out to do that like hot dog run and destroy all the cannons, and you say, "Good, okay, lieutenant, like come back," right? Um, he- I guess he also doesn't really see the big picture. Like, he's interested in yeah. winning this battle, but Leia's interested in winning the overall war, and part of that is preserving the resources that they have and protecting mm. their people as they're dwindling. Um, and I guess it kind of goes to what the Codebreaker says uh, later in the movie, where it's like, you know, you'll blow them up today, they'll blow you up tomorrow, and it's just this kind of constant back and forth of violence, and, and Poe's still in that mode. He wants to hurt the Empire. He wants revenge and all that. But I think like all the characters like Leia have seen so much of that that they're more interested in protecting what they have and and preserving mm. themselves and you know running to running away so that they can fight another day or yeah or get, so that like ten of them like can that. fight another day yeah. yeah I guess yeah like like the younger characters are very gung ho like they've they've grown up idolizing these heroes like mm. Skywalker and Han Solo so they think to be a hero is to rush into battle and. And you know, fight <laughs> fight an enemy ten times as big, but someone like Leia, who's so much more experienced, and mm. I don't know, I guess sees the bigger picture and and knows what it means to to like protect order and civility and democracy and all that. Knows that although, sometimes you have to run away. Although we do have a different, we don't. All the the younger characters are also in different parts of the spectra, right? Because you know, Poe. Is the gung ho victory above everything? No, don't think about the outcome. Basically, uh, but we also have Finn, who is, as long as I don't lose, I mean, rather uh, save the things, the few things that I I, I like. Uh, well, that's his the the first part of the his story arc, at least in this, and he learns that that. Uh, there are other things worth saving, and you don't don't have to be a hero all the time. Just well, what, one yeah. of the things I noticed on the second watch, and it just kind of connects the characters, and it's kind of one of the things I found frustrating when I first watched it was that all of the characters, all of the main characters, are just going through all of these failures, like all of the missions they go on through. You know, Poe trying to take over the ship is ultimately mm. a failure, and it actually hurts them. And you know. Mm. Um, Finn goes on this big campaign to like, get a code breaker, and it amounts to nothing, and it actually hurts them. And and yep. Ray goes to convince Luke to come back and save them. Like she thinks this is going to be what does it. She's idolized this person for so long, and realizes he's like this cynical, you know, misanthropic person who has no interest in in coming back and saving the day. And it's it. I guess it ties in with what um what Yoda says. Like yes, we all fail, but like we actually learn something from failure. So it's mm. a frustrating movie because so little gets resolved and they lose so much. But I guess the idea is that they actually, you know, they'll learn something from all of these failures. Mm. Yeah. But Ray, I guess Ray's gaining experience and they, they did some damage. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. They definitely did some damage. That's for sure. But, uh, well, I mean, also- they, 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 completely reshaped the first order <laughs> so. yeah and took out two of their well three of their largest weapons now when you include a uh, star killer base so. yeah also um there is a, f- a f- sort of a you know a synergy with the with number five? No, no number four right what uh empire, or, empire, or Stri- no. empire strikes back yeah five uh, uh, yeah. There is slight there. You have everything ending in a sort of a melancholy, uh, and I mean, there. I know that's some people dislike that, but I would say that in this situation, it sort of actually strengthens the movie. That it it's sort of even though they all failed because. They do that in Empire as, as Empire as well. Uh, in this situation, it doesn't seem like like it's a total copy, like uh, you know, Force Awakens did. Once you once you kind of reflected on it, it kind of it is kind of just cookie cutter. I, I feel like, well, I, I mean, mean, there like... are scenes in this movie that are literally basically lifted from the other movies, and like yeah. like. Ray and 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 Ben in the uh in the lift, I mean like that's 
<laughs> almost word for word, you know, the scene. So like, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm all for the, the symmetry and, and whatever, but I do kind of like, I t- do kind of resent all the like fanboys who are like, it's exactly like the a new hope what? who are like, Ryan Johnson's a genius. <laughs> it's like, there's a lot of very similar stuff, guys. Star Wars uh, is Star Wars. It's not going to change that much. Yeah. Well, what I love is it definitely feels like Empire in terms of its structure and its melancholy mm. and some of its hopelessness, but it almost feels like an anti uh, Empire yeah. Strikes Back as well because, like, the character goes to be trained by this Jedi Master, like Yoda was, but he actually has no interest in training her and actually wants the yeah. Jedi to die off. And then, like, when right. she, you know, towards the end of the movie where she, like, at the end of Empire Strikes Back, we have this, you know, incredible revelation about who. Yeah. Um, Luke Skywalker's father is and he's part of this you know genetic prophetic destiny to between good and evil and I guess um, Ray is also kind of expecting that and the answer she gets is actually you're no one your parents were nobody you were thrown yeah. away like garbage you have no place in that story that's like that's such a like anti kind of anti-climax that is one of my favorite parts of the whole movie is mm. that and I'm not sure if that's, that's really even right yeah oh yeah not- that's I agree but you go first Patrick I'm not even sure that's really the truth. I mean, it could definitely be Ben just uh, messing with her. But even if it isn't, it's so... It's, yeah, it just underlines that even our expectations are used to bring us in, but also used against us so that we don't really know what's happening, but we still get get the sense of comfort from this, the general story arc that is sort of like um you know uh uh, yeah empire basically plus a little from from the the next one but i mean at the end of empire you were like oh man what's gonna happen next what's going on i want to see the next one at the end of this i have more questions about what the hell just happened you know what i mean um well i didn't so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like I'm like I I'm fine with with Ray's parents being like nobodies. Like, yeah. I mean, if that's even true, like you know. Yeah. Can can you can you believe the dude? I don't know. But it just feels like the way they went about it, as the way they went about a number of other things, was just like, oh, you think this matters? Nothing matters. It was more of like talking to the audience than you know something that was actually going on in the world. I didn't get that impression. I guess. Like my favorite part, or one of my favorite parts of The Force Awakens, is the scene with um, who is Lupita Nyong'o's character? Uh, Maz. Yeah, where she tells Rey, your you know your parents, they're never coming back because it feels like the truth that she's been hiding from herself that she can't look at, and it carries over in this movie where he spells it out for her, like this is the dark heart of your journey, is that this thing that you want you can't have and you've known it all along and it just it feels better to me than her having like the the question of who are raised parents just feels like such a distraction from her yeah. character and her interiority and so the idea that you're nobody but also that anybody could be this person is to me it feels better it's like there's no genetic destiny involved in this it's like you're a nobody but that in in a way that's empowering. You're nobody, yeah. so you're you like you can be, you can be anything. You could be anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not a genetic lottery. You just won. It's just, yeah. Somehow she just is a force genius. Yeah, and uh, I, I feel like a lot of these characters are kind of. Oh, sorry, Patrick. Yeah, I was just saying that, as you said, uh, Katie, that the, there is much more to it than just that. I mean, we see the the boy at the ending uh force using if force grabbing the the broom and looking towards the rebellion as as a new hope for him um and i think that's what i meant by this is amping up to be uh the start of a new legacy basically that because they're planning no, like 20 films instead of three is that what you're saying yeah, they're definitely planning more, but that's not my point. My point is that the Skywalker story is ending, uh, and now it is a story just about the Force and how how that universe will 
keep on having these uh, this dichotomy between good and evil and and order and and life uh, and I, I I will enjoy it uh, for a long time as long as they don't fuck everything up too much <laughs> what I found one of the one of the darker edges of the story was that these characters almost feel trapped to like reenact the events of the previous movies. Like they mm. have these figures that they idolize and they almost have to embody them against their will. And so the idea that and you see that in the, in Kylo Ren, like the villain himself yeah. feels trapped in that role and he can't live up to it or he feels conflicted. Like he can't mm. shut down his, his love for his parents. He just can't play that role perfectly and Ray as well. And so there's almost something liberating about actually burning down the past and not having to go through this endless cycle of empire versus rebels, resistance mm. versus first order. It just goes on and on and on. You know, we bomb them today, they bomb us tomorrow. What if we actually burnt it all down and tried to make a new story? Like that's that's truly seductive. Like the the idea of the being seduced by the dark side that they keep going on and on about in the first trilogy. It's given yeah. lip service, but this but the sort of the psychic connection between Ray and um and Kylo Ren it genuinely feels like intimate and familiar and weirdly sexual and like they're forming a connection that goes beyond just, you know, we could rule and be powerful. It goes to this sense of, you know, we could escape this endless cycle and, and forge our own destiny and not have to live under the shadows of the past. The That's excellent. The thing is like he, he doesn't do that, <laughs> you know, like he thinks he's doing <laughs> that. He thinks that by like killing the 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 totem in front of him you know he'll be free of this he thought the same thing in in the force awakens when he killed han um and you know he's like oh we'll just start anew we'll rule the galaxy together as husband and wife or whatever like again almost mm. word for word vader um well, and he adopts the same title as snoke like i think that mm. ray uh, like decides to go forward in the new like she, she's still a Jedi, you know, like that's kind of the whole, I guess if you want to, like one of the major conflicts of the movie is like, what is going to happen to the Jedi? Do they deserve to continue? Mm. And the answer in the end is yes. Uh, um, but that is not as repetitive as Kylo, even though he thinks he's doing the complete opposite. It's, I actually, it's sorry, go, go ahead, Duncan. I actually think that's the big tragedy of the movie that, they yeah they definitely do revert to those roles but mm. there's a moment where he like extends his hand and says do you want to actually burn this all down and 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 be together and that's like if you just going back to the idea of the force as this visual construction that the movie's toying with that's like the closest to a kind of symmetry or balance between light and dark and they almost reach out and touch hands and and that would be a way of escaping this kind of sick cyclical violence that seems to mm. go on forever they almost do it but then they decide no we can't and then they they again it, it shifts immediately from attraction to repulsion and they're pushing and it's like it's beautifully yeah. symbolized by the the ship being literally sliced in half and then that's when they go back to their roles that's when he decides okay now i'm supreme leader snoke so yeah. i'm the well, new supreme wasn't, leader wasn't he goes he proposing in full, like, that they rage. both take over the first order though and like change so. it or whatever, that was but... his that was his idea, and it's weird because it's like they do kind of want the same thing in that what they like she she wants to be a she set out the beginning of the movie to train as a Jedi that didn't work out. His role as a Jedi and as part of the First Order hasn't worked out. They both want or are at least striving towards some sort of rejuvenation, but he's so emotionally immature that he can't see any way out of it except through violence and i guess that's where the repulsion is is that mm. like she's more put together where like at the end of it you get the sense okay she can see a way out through rebuilding and through community connections and whereas kylo ren is just isolated and mm. has no idea how to be a human being who rebuilds anything right. he just knows how to tear things down because if he Wait. said hey let's screw this let's just go you know, backpacking on some crazy planet and figure ourselves out, then maybe, you know, she would have taken him up on that. But yeah. instead he's like, oh, forget the forget the rebellion, forget the First Order, but let's actually use the First Order. Like, Yeah, that's right. I think that, that would basically have ended with her going with him then. Because uh, she, the, the amount of it, how she was tempted by it, it shows that 
if he had given her a better offer <laughs> than what he was giving her, uh, she would probably have gone with him. It's uh, it's. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> and I like. I just wanted to, to go back to the whole Duncan. You, you, the, the thing you said with the cyclical uh, nature of the story is that that is how it is. There's always a dark side and a light side, a princess and a and a master, so to say, in a way. Uh, ever since, well, ever since the uh, well, however, whichever storyline you you believe or you you subscribe to. There's always been like the antithesis to the the uh, calm and order Jedi, and that's because the Jedi, as they have been for a long while, is not about balance, which Luke is trying to to instill on on Rey, and I think that's what the last movie is going to be about, basically finding the true balance between light and dark. And that's how they're gonna end the the cyclical nature of of uh, first order empire versus rebellion. Yeah, versus... but then you don't have anyone who's the antagonist at that point, right? You can't keep making movies. Like they that's how just, you end a franchise. That's not how you come keep to it going. The, I mean, I feel like they have to eventually come to the conclusion that these things are like there is no like true balance to be found. That these things are just cyclical. Okay. Because because other words exactly. Yeah, or because the balance the key- exists already. You know, I think that like Ray's scene with Luke is that like she 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 finds balance in the space between all the other stuff. Like, and nothing's going on. You know, nobody's like fighting for balance. It's just kind of. I mean, maybe that's just nature. <laughs> but but it's because we see the dark in Jedi and we see the light in you know the Sith and like that kind of is the balance in a way. Um, like this whole concept of like, you know, well, uh, Luke kills the Sith and that brings balance. Like that never made sense. Right. Oh, uh, but, uh, but yeah, if you go for the, uh, the extended universe, there's definitely stuff called gray Jedi, so to say that, that walk the, the line between good and evil and see no inherent, uh, dark or light side, just the force in general. Uh, and that's what I was hoping, at least, that they were going to work towards. And then I think there could definitely be other villains that has nothing to do with the force. I mean, uh, uh, was it Admiral Thrawn or something like that? Uh, he's a non-force user that could be quite um, interesting to have as a Antagonist. He's in, he's in Rebels. Sorry. He's in Star Wars Rebels, the animated show. Oh yeah. So. So not even. Uh, it kind of bores me, actually. Not gonna lie. <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> you're just wrong. <laughs> I mean, watch the show. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, I've I've read the books with him, and he's quite cool. Yeah, on the oh, show, yeah, he's, I'm not, he's saying, not that I mean, great. Everybody loves Thrawn. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Other than that, the stuff like that, you could have another person that could be interesting that is basically the, the surrogate for Thrawn. Uh, stuff like that. It could be other things. So Thrawn was heir to the Empire, and now we have heir to Thrawn. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure. Who knows? Who knows? I am hopeful. Everyone loved Rose, right? No. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh Not my really. god, Patrick. I, I loved Rose. I didn't love the whole setup for her where she was like, oh my gosh, it's Finn, hero of the Resistance, who's been in the Resistance for like a day and a half. It's like, oh, you're a legend around here. I, okay. I don't know. That makes sense to me. I think they, they share information pretty quickly and that's clearly the type of person that she's looking for, you know. Yeah. No, no, she was... It feels like little... she's been doing it for a long time though, right? Like she's been with them probably a number of years. I don't know. Also, if the timeline that Adam lays up is supposed to work, then how did she, her and he, uh, she and her sister have like a, a long intimate uh, conversation about how Finn is like the best hero of the uh, resistance ever? Uh, yeah, that uh, doesn't make any sense. Space so, 
Yeah, space cape. Yeah, on the tarmac before she got into her bomber. Yeah. So, can we just oh. have a moment and talk about how dishy Finn is? I mean, it doesn't mean it's the same day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there could have been time between hey. the end, the destruction of the Starkiller base and the end yeah. of the last one. Yeah. yeah. They had a couple, they had a couple hours And Finn was making a chat. name for himself in the Rebellion already once he got to the base. Like, Leia had heard of him. And Yeah, but that all happened in, like, a couple of hours. Right, like, but so I'm saying, like... I don't know. So, I didn't enjoy Rose. Um, You're a monster. Yes, like, what about, what that's, about that's her didn't you enjoy? Like, what was wrong with Rose? Uh, I guess it's just that she's there to be cute. And that I don't what? really enjoy that. Her point she... is basically to, to, to be cute. But if no, she had succeeded in the human. sabotaging, it would have been great. And yeah, she, like, it was a great character. I just, the only part I didn't like was the end where uh, they both, like, run into this inferno and survive somehow. But, I mean, it was a good moment. It was just weird. They could have used one more character beat before she gives him that peck on the lips. Yeah. Hmm. Or just before she, like, almost kills herself for him. I'm not sure I believe what she said either. What did she say that that's not how we defeat? The, <laughs> the oh, I kind of hated what she said. She oh, said, no, I love it. She said, We don't, we don't, uh, yeah, we don't win by by killing them, like we win by saving the people we love or whatever. No, it's not, yeah. it's, it, the point is not to the, the whole, her whole thing is like everybody is fighting because they're trying to destroy the first order, and the first order is trying to destroy the resistance, and that's completely yeah. the wrong reasons. And she's like, No, we do this because we want to preserve life, we want to save the people we love. Like, I think it was a slightly cheesy moment, but I really like the sentiment there. I think yeah. it's it's very important to point out in a movie that has a tremendously high body count, um, especially yeah. among the good guys. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah, see, that's my problem. Because, number one, if he succeeded, wouldn't that have saved everyone inside there, at least maybe until help arrived, thus saving lives? And also, well, yeah, at this point, like, almost the entire resistance is dead now. So now we're like, think, hey, we, we have to make sure we save everyone. Like, okay. I think the power of the final scene, though, is that, like, ideas can spread. Like, powerful ideals can spread beyond people. Like, you can blow up uh, a spaceship, but, like, it's more powerful to save someone or to show an act of kindness or to help someone else out. And that, that like, ripples outwards. Um, so you can, like, instill hope in another person by saving them and I don't know I, I guess Ray doesn't kill Kylo Ren and Luke doesn't kill Vader like that's a long standing Star Wars theme you know sometimes it works out sometimes it's Obi-Wan not finishing the job on hey on, Anakin killed you know, Count Dooku I mean, come on yeah that, that <laughs> <is fine. laughs> I, I kind of expected like on that line of sort of like spreading hope and like ideas catching fire was to see um, like when when like Ghost Luke is out there and he's not getting killed and all this stuff, I expected like them to cut back and uh, Poe's got like a camera in his hand. Like this is going to be great footage, as. Yes. Like, uh... uh, the the thing the thing at the end is also it's poignant because her own sister like committed suicide to blow up the dreadnought, so she's almost like trying to save her sister from from killing herself. Like she would rather have her sister than have destroyed a dreadnought. Well, it did it did plummet into the dreadnought afterwards. So I mean, no, logic I, mean I don't would... think I don't think she knew that her sister. I don't think anyone really knows that her sister was responsible for kind of making that whole thing work at the end. Well, or wasn't there wasn't but... there only two uh, people on that on that bomber? One was so she was an integral part, anyways. No matter how yeah, it that... right, right, right. They would know the ship that dropped the payload. They, they yeah. wouldn't know that she, like, you know, kind of made a choice there to kill herself. But I guess she was already going to die anyway. I don't know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, she wouldn't She wouldn't know that it was a, sort of like a suicide mission for... Well, for like sacrifice, yeah. I guess. Sacrifice. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Back, yeah. Sacrifices. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, that's probably right. Can we, I mean, uh, definitely. She, she would trade that giant ship they blew up to have her sister back. And I think they all feel that way, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I, I I can I can see what you what you're saying. I mean, that does give a little more credence to her character. But I was just, I mean, when every anything in general is to 
yeah, sweet or corny. I just I revolt against it. So it's just <laughs> you're in the wrong series. <laughs> so what is uh what is your feeling on the porg? Uh, they are pests, and <laughs> they, were, they and... were ripping apart the ship. Yeah, they're pests. They should be eaten and killed, or uh, uh, whatever. If they are as delicious as a dodo, they should go the way of the dodo. I, I was actually I was rearing up to despise the porgs because I got really sick of all of the porg spam that was basically yeah. all over the internet. Um, and I don't think that those things are are cute when they're not in action and like animated. When they're just when it's just like a, a stuffed animal, I think they're just creepy and weird. Mm. Um, but I thought they were fine. Like I didn't think they were overused. I thought they were kind of like little accented, funny moments. You know, sometimes a little bit of levity and a heavy moment. And I I, I was actually surprised that they I I did not object to the way the por- porgs were used in this movie. Although well, I am still Team Crystal Fox. What did you think about uh, a <laughs> that that elephant titty that Luke had to touch? <laughs> to get oh milk God. yeah that was cool <laughs> <laughs> what is like creepy like, creepy old man luke running around in his daily routine was maybe one of my favorite parts of the movie and i did not know what was happening <laughs> yeah it was, cool. it was so good it was like and he looked her straight in the eye after milking that like, it was like what what now the creepiest part is the animal <laughs> looking her in the eye and going yeah, yeah that afterwards. just happened <laughs> You know, because the animal's like, I'm here every day at this time. This is how it goes. <laughs> yeah. And Ray like has that look like I've seen something I should not have seen. <laughs> it's like, is it? Yeah, it's like when she sees Kylo with his shirt off. Well, okay, what is look. what is with Adam Driver's giant wide like semi truck of a chest and the fact that his pants are like way up over his belly button? It goes it's... into his belly button. What is going on? Very he's strange. Actually... He's actually a, a, a trained soldier and everything, and I think it's basically, I think the, when he he went also to military school or something like that. So the the whole uh, ceremony uniform is also kind of like that. So I guess it's just yeah, but that's his the, like undergarment. So it's like it's like he has it's like he has spanks basically for his costume, and then they yeah, just left it, them on for that scene. I think I think he just. Yeah, well, I think he's just built to be a, a soldier originally. I, uh, you know, I don't doubt that. It's just his chest is too wide for a human chest. It doesn't make <laughs> sense. <to me. laughs> that was a like this mo- this movie is really funny, and I had a very raucous audience who laughed and applauded at several points. But that was one of my favorite <laughs> moments where she's like, "I'd rather not do this right now." He's like, "Yeah, me neither." <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, she, I, I have tremendous respect for Adam Driver as a as an actor, but also as uh, a lot of his movements really lend into. You can see that he has experience as a person that's combat trained. A lot of the movements are very uh, uh, economical, like they he doesn't use too much energy except for when he really, you know, flips and then attacks everything. And even then it still feels like he's measured in every single movement he does. And I like that. Yeah. It uh, feels like he's constantly containing something until he unleashes yeah. it. And that's it's, it's so amazing. I, I, I know it's probably just some of his own mannerisms shining through, but if even if half of it is, or a, a fragment of it is is him acting, then he's an amazing actor right there. Yeah, and that's part of the reason why I like the final act because he's so subdued and cowed in the first, you know, mm. two hours or hour and a half of the movie. Mm. But then when he unleashes, like when he sort of turns full to the dark side, becomes supreme leader, and he's just yelling and ranting and raving. And when the Falcon emerges and he just yells, "Blow that thing out of the sky!" It was. Yeah. Uh, I got chills. He was like, just the delivery was amazing. It was so intense. Mm. They I really expected him to shit. destroy a console again. Um, yeah, and, you know. I mean, that would have been kind of productive, though. <laughs> to do tossed, it in. I mean, he tossed Hux around, which was pretty yeah. great. Great. We also, I, yeah. 
MVP for Hux. I love Hux. I don't know what it is, but there's something about that priggish, like yeah. self-important, evil, like evil on purpose thing that like just cracks me up. And I'm really, I, I tremendously enjoyed that we were allowed to laugh at that in this movie, as opposed yeah. to The Force Awakens, where it was kind of like, I was laughing uncomfortably. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. He's he's what uh uh like a Grand Moff Tarkin character could have been if he wasn't so distinguished. Uh Yeah, if he's like 20 years younger and yeah. kind of an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> Yeah. He has I mean, a... go ahead. So when uh I guess this is still kind of the beginning of the movie when um when they let them get away, kind of at first, and he's like, "Well, uh, I'll I'll talk to Supreme Leader Snoke in my private office," yeah. and like his head just appears. <laughs> so at this point, Snoke is like halfway across the galaxy, right? And he like yeah. force pushes him to the ground, yeah. um, which I was like, I, I wasn't sure. I was like, he's really far away, right? But I was like, fuck it, this is great. Like, <laughs> like yeah. I was I was I was into that. I did think it was a good character beat when. Kylo Ren is unconscious in Snoke's chamber, and Hux is clearly debating, like, what is it worth to him to just take his pistol out and shoot him in the head? Yeah. You see, that small moment is just so great. All of those. They have yeah, so I, many small, and you can see it in the characters, and, you, and, and also just later on, you can see it like, they don't spell out a lot of the things. Like, I'm sure that half of the, the theater where I was didn't even notice that Ray had had the Jedi books or that the, the kid at the end yeah. uh, picks up the, the, the broom with force powers, those things, they don't tell us that they, they just expect us to notice it. If, the, if, we're, if we're really paying t- attention, I completely missed the books. Like someone, someone had to mention it to me and then I went and looked it up. I was like, Oh crap. Yeah. Like, I, I think there's a lot of, a lot of subtle Easter eggs in here too, that were great. Wasn't that I didn't notice it, but wasn't that like an ironing droid or something? Because like my audience, yes, box, yeah, like, oh my god, yes, yeah, yeah, that, like that was, angle they took first, and then yeah, that yeah. was so good. It was, was meant like, to what be is scary. This ship that looks like a giant fucking iron coming down. <laughs> oh, it's an actual iron. Yeah, I think that's totally playing with the whole uh, pressure chamber, uh, Darth Vader's pressure chamber kind right. of thing. Yeah. Yep, yep. Can we talk about Laura Dern's character? Which one is that? Yeah, yeah. The uh Baldo, the is that her name? Admiral um Oh uh, who yeah. sacrifices Ooh. herself. Ho- Admiral Holdo. Holdo, yeah. My yeah. one of the, like the things that I admired most about this movie is that I guess I'm so used to in movies in general when men's like Bad toxic masculinity behavior is called out. It's usually done so in one hand and validated in the other hand. And I love that this movie, when Poe jumps up and tries to explain Laura Dern's job to her, and she just has this tight rictus of a smile on her face the whole time. She's like, okay, how about you do your job and I'll do my job? And then at the end, then when he turns on her and you think it's going to be this victory, like, oh, he is taking some, someone incompetent out of power and it is immediately reversed on him. And no, dumbass, how about you stop underestimating your superior officer and sit down? You don't know what's going on. And I, we all said it earlier. It felt nicely topical. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I just adored that, that it's like in no way did were those expectations met and that his behavior was not validated. Yeah. Yeah, so you're probably going to hate me for this, but I I did not like her character until the end and not I like that I like that aspect of it because um Poe was being an idiot and I was, you know, I liked the fact that she was standing up to him, but I also felt I just thought both of their plans were really stupid. And so I I just thought, well, I don't think his plan has a chance to succeed, but that's probably what will succeed. And I'm like, well, her plan I didn't think had any chance of succeeding. And really, at the end, like, yeah, they all just died anyway. So I was like, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. It's fine. And she went down with the ship and had a great moment. And so I kind of was like, I like it. But, I'm really uh, bummed that she died. But I think that her death was, like, top five Star Wars deaths for me. That mm. that that uh, imagery there, mm-hmm. 
that was sublime. Uh, yeah, that was amazing. The which because it begs it's the so, question, like why didn't the other ships so many... leave? Why didn't like so when they first like they they had the medical ship and they had there was like four or five ships originally, right? Why yeah. didn't they just load you know an equal number of people onto those ships and all you know port somewhere else or something? If they were, I mean, they weren't sure who was you know how they were being followed. But like, why not have you know them split up as much as they can? I don't know. I felt I felt that was a little weird. But you know, she could have done. They could have done the same thing. They could have turned that thing around, and rammed them into the ship like much earlier. I don't know. Yeah, but I think that they needed to be lulled into a safe, uh, false sense of security to, before that could have happened. Also, uh, I don't, Poe didn't like spill the beans that like they're tracking us through hyperspace. He didn't share that information until he like absolutely had to. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Because that was that was the command crew on the bridge knew that, and they all got killed, and Leia was in the coma. Yeah, yeah that's true. Poe yeah. is a little bit of a dick in this movie. I mean, I love him, but he, he he's a lot of a dick in this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's definitely that's his journey is to become the next Leia, basically. Uh. In my well, he my has point. to now because I, there's literally nobody else left. But I don't know if I want him left. running things. Any, like, you know? Like, I don't know. No, but that's... You, you need to get to a point where we actually trust him again as a leader. Uh, or if we ever trusted him as a leader. Um, well, I think, you know, you see him learn over the course of the movie mm-hmm. and the fact that he wants to pull out of the attack because they're losing too many people and the fact that he realizes Luke is trying to cause a distraction and they need to to evacuate so they can fight another day. Yeah. I mean, getting getting uh, stunned by no less than General Leia herself, who you <laughs> yeah. think is your BFF in this fight. Um, yeah. That'll, yeah. The mark. That'll underline oh. the point. Yeah. 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 Speaking of getting stunned, I remember what I was going to ask earlier when we were discussing uh, Rose. What was Finn's plan with the escape pod? Like, those, those things don't go into hyperspace, so they're kind of in the middle of nowhere. Like, what were they... What were like what you eject out? What do you do? I don't I don't understand. What, I think what was plot- he trying to go to the first order and do something? No, no. I think he plot he wanted to plot the a course to the nearest uh, planet he could land on or whatever. Uh, well, but initially when they jumped, space. they said they were in the middle of nowhere. Like purposely, yeah. they were in the middle of space, like with nothing nearby. And then in the end of the movie, it's like, oh, there's this one planet nearby. Yeah, but he's you know? not getting anywhere if he's not if he's on the ship. So. Yeah, yeah, but I just, feel, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I just felt like the whole escape pod thing was just you eject from the escape pod and they yeah. blow you up. That's what I thought I, would happen. I really, I have so many problems with Canto Bite. <laughs> if we could talk about that for a second, um, and they're not like a lot of it is. I see what they're trying to do. Like in the, I was talking to other people and I was like, and they were like it's so thematic and like you're learning about like the underbelly of the galaxy and you're learning, you know, the, the stuff that really makes the rebellion. And I'm like, all of this is true, but I hate triangulated side quests. And like Mm. when you have to do a thing to do a thing, to do a thing to me, that's just like, it's great. I I don't, I don't like the bad writing sensor in my head does not ping that often. I'm, I'm pretty generous, but to me, that's just like, no, we don't need to be here. <laughs> you know, figure yeah, out some other way to get from the resistance ship to Snoke's sh- ship. Like, if that's what you need to do. And so just, like, yeah. functionally, it, it really bothered me. Would it have made more sense, I mean, to me, if Finn actually does run away, you know, because that's kind of his MO, and then r- happens to run into something that now he thinks he can help, he runs back. Instead of, yeah, like, we have to go specifically to this place and find this guy, and, all within well, a couple of hours. Uh, I'm, you know. I mean, they could have just streamlined it and had Rose see if she could. They could sneak aboard the ship and try and break right, into the thing. Right, because we disabled. already. They already said they can cloak the little when they when they all evacuate. They can somehow you know cloak the. Uh, I think the transport. I think I'm they like, just wanted to. That? Yeah, I think they just wanted to explore more of the universe. Like otherwise, it would just be right. one long spaceship chase and like uh, occasionally cutting to this island like they just wanted to which, branch which out is kind of the but problem did, with the movie it did feel really like incongruous because you've got this life or death kind of chase with the empire with the 
with the resistance um, running out of fuel. And then you have, you know, Finn, like, you know, running around slot machines with his uh, wide eyed and saying, oh, this place is great. And having to be pulled back on, on task by Rose. Mm. Um, and again, we also... like, like, I think it was really good for her character. Like, I, I, I like their development. I don't have a problem with the environmentalist, you know, like, let's free all the, all the, you know, the horses, the horse things. Um, that was fine for me. It was just that the fact that they were there at all and spending so much time there. And I, again, I was yeah. like, we still need to do so much. <laughs> Like, yeah, so much and it's, yeah. I felt like this whole movie. My problem, like I, I get to a scene and I'm like, I love what's going on with the characters. I love what's going on with these people, but I hate where they're at, or I hate why they're there, or you yeah. know, um, that's like eighty percent of the movie for me. Yeah, it, it was good for like plot and thematic purposes, but it really, sorry, for character and thematic purposes, but it really felt superfluous to the plot because it ultimately amounted in nothing. Like they didn't even get to the code breaker they were after and then the code breaker they did get betrayed them and then they were turned over to the empire like you literally could have just tried to uh infiltrate the the ship yourself and then gotten caught do, but i guess do, it's just like that theme of does the resistance not have code breakers like is that not a thing they're or on they, another they planet never figured guess, that they had to do that know. that guy's name is uh <laughs> his name apparently is dj which according to benicio <laughs> I, I, del toro stands for yeah, it stands for don't join, as in don't join any causes. <laughs> All right. Are you, wait, it, it, where are you, is this like an interview he gave or something? Yeah. Is it, or is that serious? No, that was in an interview he gave. My name is DJ, don't join. Apparently it's on his hat, like it's carved into his hat and I wasn't looking <laughs> at it, so, but apparently you can see it visibly in the film. Uh Okay. I was reading one review where they were sort of looking at it as like this homage to like Casablanca and all these nihilistic people who are profiting off the war and, uh, and that behind the scenes, like away from the the good versus evil battle, there's this whole military industrial conflict that's kind of selling weapons and uh and battle cruisers to both sides and they're they're sort of it's in their interest that this war continually perpetuates. Yeah. Yeah, although that to me didn't seem as like revolutionary as it was kind of portrayed. Like, all right, they're shitty rich people in the galaxy. I also think that these movies are made for seven year olds. So the moral simplicity of rich people war profiteering doesn't. I, I, I'm fine with it. Yeah, I we guess, gotta save I mean, the horses. Was that yeah, not the I argument guess. for the prequels? Is whenever yeah. people would complain about stuff. George Lucas would be like, well, I mean, you know, Star Wars is about kids, and it's for the kids. And then you're like, well, why are you making it about politics? <laughs> Baby's you know, first um, tax, you know, dispute. <laughs> no, I mean, like, yeah. it was very <laughs> Luke- Lukesian, Lukish, Lucasish. Well, he said he Luke-y. loved it. Um, but but again, my my problem was more that they were on Kentobite dealing with this to begin with. So like everything that kind of came out from that, I was just kind of like, ah. Oh. Oh my god! Yeah, uh, but, and, but you, and that's you, something like I'm afraid to watch it again because like I, I'm I'm nervous that I'll have even less patience for it now that I know that it ultimately doesn't actually lead lead anywhere. But to be fair, I mean, where do Han and Leia and Chewie go after Hoth is attacked? They go to some. They hide high, in the high. space worm, and then yeah. they go to ha- and then they go to Bespin, which is a high class mining uh, colony, right? Well, uh, sort of, it's like a work. It's like a working colony. I mean, there, it's, yeah, it's, it's like people that work, and but it makes money, and it's kind of off the radar, right? Yeah, yeah but it's like, they they they, they have like this Bespin. side mission. They have like a total side mission that has nothing to do with the rebellion. Right, but the mission comes to them. Like, like when they go to Bespin, that becomes the location, right? Because they're they're being hunted. Yeah. So, like, they were just running away, and Vader finds them. It's not like they had to go to Bespin, and you know, to get the key that opens the door that allows them to escape Vader or something. Yeah. I uh, think the major difference there is like how it feels. Like this one felt forced, whereas in Empire, none of that felt forced. It felt like it fit. Right, and like Han finds a friend. He's like, oh my gosh, Lando, what? You know, like, 
it just all it did feel like it all just sort of fell in line really quickly. Yeah. And it is something for them to do while Luke is away. Whereas and here, I feel like if you're trying to, I buy feel like time, they already had shit to do while Ray was away, though. Right. Well, they they just had to slowly run away, and I I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> it's the setup. They set this up so that they're on a slow, you know, chase scene, and they have nothing to do. They can't really get away. They can't go explore anything else unless they do something like this. So the only way for them to maybe buy time would be to, you know, say, "Hey, we're going to send some people over to negotiate our surrender," and then like hopefully they get captured and then they escape and then it's all like you know on the Death Star again. I mean, I don't know, you know, what else would they have done? Um, yeah. They gotta kill time somehow. Honestly, they could have just not had all those characters really featured in this one if they wanted to just focus on Ray and Luke and Ray and Kylo. They they didn't really need all that other crap. They could have just not had them there. Oh, I, I, I mean, it works for George R. R. Martin. <laughs> You know? well, but yeah, I mean, so. how, how how much is the Ray and Kylo stuff? I think like the Ray Luke Kylo stuff is like the strongest part of it for me, but like actual like runtime, is it half the movie even? Like I don't know. I feel like people would have been disappointed. I mean, I would have <laughs> lost my shit to not see Finn. Yeah, so, right. You can't just leave them hanging. Yeah, I mean, no, I know, but you don't, you also don't have to give them something to do just for the sake of something to do. Doing either. something, yeah. Like, there's a way to feature them in the film without having them be, you know, however much majority of the film. Like, how much of the film was Leia in, in A Force of Wake? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Finn, Finn did it seem a bit sure. shortchanged. They didn't really have much for him to do. So they just speaking had this of, uh, Speaking of Leia. So, uh, I guess, I mean, even we're talking, we were talking earlier, we say, oh, well, Poe's got to leave the resistance now. Technically, she's alive at the end of this movie. Um, yeah, that's, that's what uh, I was talking about. What, yeah. How are they going to get out of that pickle? Uh, yeah, so what are, they've said that she won't appear at all in the next movie, whether we know that's true or not. They also said, J.J. Abrams said in the last movie that Ray's parents were really important, and once you find out, it's going to be amazing. So, um you know, I don't know if they're going to try to do like a digital thing or they're going to kill her off or send her off somewhere. They but how do you wrong. feel her arc in this movie was? Uh, did you like it? Did you hate the fact that she survived in space, which some people seem to hate? Um, hated I hated it. You, you, can sit, you can survive for a while. She's uh, a force user. <laughs> she yeah. held her Thanks. breath right before the explosion. Like, whatever, well, it's fine. To, to me, the thing is less... Um, less an issue of practicality because like if you're again like not to put too fine a point on it but like come on it is star wars um so like i don't i don't really care about that i'm and i and i loved seeing leia use the force like mm. that was the culmination of many many yeah. years for some people since 1977 the first time, right? like yeah um a, a really strong moment i just didn't like how it looked like I just didn't exactly. like the look of her floating through the air. It's did you did you flash back not to the Man idea. of Steel? No, know? thank God, because I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I did. It was it was like just Superman bizarre. It space. came out of nowhere, and it and then they don't explain like it. I mean, I don't think they have a wrong. duty to explain it. No. It's it's yeah, no, fine. Like yeah, they don't need Leia to has it. force. She's in a moment of extreme distress. She's not only concerned yeah. about her own life, but also the continued existence of this thing that she's devoted her entire existence to. Like, it really isn't a stretch for me. No one around her questions it. So That's what? what well, it's well, yeah, because they, they must... But like, the reaction if, by the other characters on screen with her, like, oh, th yeah, that's normal. We see that every day. No, no, but if no one questions it, this must be something Luke must have given her some... Like, I can yeah. wave this off because it's been years. Obviously, you know, she got in touch with it. Luke helped her, whatever. She's yeah, not a yeah. Jedi, but she knows things. But I mean, She's the thing Luke to me is, I, I thought she was dead, like for that five, ten seconds or whatever. I, I was like, oh my gosh, they've just killed her. Like I, I thought they were going to do that. that. that it was a, it was like a couple um, minutes until we saw her in space. I was, yeah. Felt yeah. Like it anyway. Well, I mean, when yeah. they when they came back to her face, I was like, there she is. She's dead. You know. Uh, I don't know. Did yeah. you guys think she was dead, or I mean, because I had heard that 
they they had planned when she when Carrie Fisher died. I'd heard well they planned to well, have that her was, in the next film. That was so that was supposedly the big spoiler in the in the trailer. Like you see yeah. um, Kylo Ren blasting her, and then like we assume that's how she's going to be written out of the out of the story. And then she goes into a coma, so we assume you know that's that's how she's going to be written out. So when she comes back, it's like the biggest you know cheer, and yeah. she like blows Poe away because it's like no, she's still here. She's still a significant character in the story. Um, so yeah, I was really surprised. Yeah, I was very yeah, surprised as well. For me. And I was just thinking from the from a whole, what are you gonna do? Because they did promise that they're not gonna do CGI Leia next. Mm. Uh, so if they if they keep that promise, what are they gonna do? Gonna give her like, or is she gonna is she gonna go into retirement, or is she gonna have an off screen death? How are they not gonna have her in next in the next movie? I, I feel like them just killing her, like, in between movies, I feel like they probably feel that's not the right answer. Yeah. Because it will be obvious why. So I think the solution is maybe, you know, the Resistance Rebellion now needs to be rebuilt, needs to be split up, needs to have cells. So the excuse can be she's in place X doing something, gathering resources. We don't see her, but, we you know, we hear from her. And they then might that, you know, like. I don't like that. I think that it would be better for like the the next for nine to start like several years later, like Star Wars movies have done in the past, and then we can be like, all right, like you know, or like she died in some battle or something at some point. Yeah, or like had oh, some yeah. heroic. Like they can they can frame that. Yeah. That way they can actually craft an ending for Leia, even if we don't have Leia there. As a it like, might, it'll be a huge bummer, but like, it might be poignant to do something like you know, her father and all her people on Alderaan have kind of an off screen death. We we never see them, but we see Alderaan well, explode. All, all, and we, Alderaan see, we hear about the force crying out, you know, like a million voices crying out and being silent. So, well, what I'm saying is, I don't think they want to do an off screen death, Pro- they probably don't want to. So, hmm. like, like we have a situation where maybe she's alive in the next one, however much time has passed, and then you have, you know, okay, we're meeting up with, you know, with General Leia, that's her ship, and then, it, you know, it gets blown up or something. So, like, we never always, see her, uh, but we see her death. Like, I don't know how, I mean, they could, they're writers, I'm not a writer, I'm just saying, I feel like that, like, maybe they don't necessarily want to just say, hey, she died six months ago. Um, well, if they do, like, if she is dead... Did. Between films, they could do kind of a jump cutty flashback thing where it's a stand in and you're just kind of seeing like a shadow or the back of her. Something like that, too, would work as well, where we don't actually need her face. Well, they, could, they could completely CGI her if they wanted, but I just don't think they want to do that. It's, they it's they said insane. they're not going to do that, and I don't think that anybody would be that happy with it. No, I would be that would that would make me very angry. Yeah, it would be uh, weird. I mean, it was it was hard enough to see Tarkin that way. Yeah, <laughs> but that's at least, yeah. that's at least a f- like a few years after, right? More. Well, than do you think they have years. any footage shot already that if they, they do, work would, with? If they do, it would be incomplete, and it probably wouldn't. It work would be deleted scenes story. from this, and it wouldn't make sense. And mm. I think, yeah, yeah, I think having her pass away between movies is probably the best way to go. Yeah, and then they they go to her grave or something like that and pay homage, something like that. That could be good. Uh, yeah, I would like yeah, I that. I loved her. I loved seeing her and Luke together again and, and yeah. kissing her on the forehead. That was really nice. So, quick question. Quick question. What is the 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 charm that he puts in her hand? It, it was the fuzzy dice from the Falcon. It's it vanishes because it wasn't there. I know that, but is that a reference to the original trilogy? Like, what I is that thing? Just, that it was in the just, oh shit, sorry. It was apparently in the original, uh, like a New Hope for a yeah. second, but I didn't remember seeing it ever. It's like it's like the whole idea. They put these little dice up there, like you know, like a trucker has the fuzzy dice. Yeah. That was the whole gag. Was like Han and uh, Chewie have these little yeah. golden dice. You know, like this is their, you know, they're like independent contractors. And it was, well, like, and doesn't he like flick it at one point when they're doing the trench run? Like for luck, he like flicks it. Or am I, I making that up? Uh, I, I don't. Can't remember. I don't remember. I just know it's like kind of like a lore thing that's been around for a while. And then Luke mm-hmm. finds it in the cockpit when he's there. And I think. Part of the reason they had it was 
because it's a totem that you know uh, brings brings him you know he's meeting up with Leia and it's reminding her of Han and they're kind of sharing this connection the three of them have had and it also gets you the audience you're like oh he brought the he brought the the dice so clearly he's there you like you don't think for a second he's not there mm. um, yeah. yeah except for he seemed younger that was the only thing that it's like something seemed weird about it to me because he seemed like his mm. hair had been he dyed, dyed darker. his beard yeah <laughs> like, he, yeah, seemed, like, he right? seemed cleaner he stopped and he had on his way he had a lightsaber i'm like is that raised like like yeah, his lightsaber gonna look like, like regenerate lightsaber um it was very confusing mark hamill was really good in this movie <laughs> He was so good. better in this than he was in the originals, I think. Like, but that, yeah. that he's never been the greatest actor ever. I don't know, like the moment when he comes out of the smoke and just brushes his shoulder. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. so gangster. Probably the best best moment of the movie. That's so gangster. He has a he's got a great face. Like there's so much sort of like going on there. Like, his facial but acting. His amazing. his face is in in the dictionary under craggy. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know why that is. Got right? that car crash. Yeah. Yeah. Shooting Corvette Summer, like right after uh, he kind of rose to fame and in the original uh, Star Wars and kind of messed up his face. Then they had to write it into Empire and all that. What did y'all think of Can, his? Uh... Uh... Go ahead, Hannah. Well, I was wondering what people's thoughts were on his actual exit. Like, it seems like he's seen the suns on Tatooine and then yeah. there's the mm-hmm. music of like when he begins his journey basically after his aunt and uncle are killed yeah it was really reminiscent of that um so is that just kind of him coming full circle or is it also saying like this part of his journey is dead but it's also beginning No, I, I think that's just pulling back to to remind us of the kid he was, like when this started, of you know, of a new hope. Seeing him on that, you know, that desert with the suns, and um, and for a second, I thought I saw something in the sun originally, and I'm like, oh my gosh, they like they sent me a, too. a ship to bomb him. Yeah, oh, I shit. thought something was coming. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah, oh. me too. <laughs> it's like he knows he's about to die. I mean, that's what happened anyway, but not at all how I thought it was going to. <laughs> what did I you thought think? it was that was sorry. well done sorry, sorry I'm sorry, sorry Katie. Katie what did y'all think of sort of the, the little triptych of stories that we get that lead up to the revelation of what actually happened between him and Kylo Ren as in we get mm-hmm. two incomplete versions of the story and at right. the end we find out the truth which I actually found was really moving in that mm. it's a mistake that's not malicious or, or or even like necessarily evil it's just like a moment of weakness and fear that has massive consequences that are understandable I, I kind of felt like that it was um i mean it's not necessarily the same comparison but it felt like you know someone sitting on the edge of their bed with a gun like contemplating suicide sort of thing um yeah. you know it's that moment of like i think this is i think this is the only option i have and then he, you know, it seems he very quickly moves on from that. But, you know, Kylo had already woken up at that point. And, uh, I like how it kind of brings yeah. it back to Anakin. It's it's fear that is born in what became of Anakin. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, that's what drove Luke to be so paranoid. And So how, how old was uh, Ben when this happened? Did they say that in the first movie? He had to have been a teenager. I mean, yeah, yeah. So this is like ten or fifteen years before these movies. Is that is that about right? Yeah. Are, you don't I think guess. they're teenagers now? Him and Ray. Well, Ray's teenagers. like early twenties. Yeah, He's clearly late twenties. Or um, thirty. Unless they're twins, you know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that never made sense. Sorry. Um, it reminds me. No, no. Me a she's a like Kenobi. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been great. Stop yourself. Anything would have been fine. The constant flashing back to that scene reminded me a bit of um, Rashomon, where, like, different characters remember it differently. Mm. And just that idea, like, I guess it's the, it's sort of the one moment that almost created this entire new trilogy, 
And if you think of the, the, the idea of the force as being connected with, with everything, just this, just the, the very intent to kill, like that giving into darkness was what kind of spread outwards and uh, threw the entire galaxy out of balance. And it's so excellent because it's such a small thing. I mean, like, it's huge and it's monstrous that, like, in that moment he's contemplating killing his nephew and it poisons everything. But it's just, like, it's a moment. And then, like, everything else is fallout from that. And it's it was it's the- weird, too, though, because he's contemplating killing his nephew, but he also, he says that Snoke had already corrupted him, and immediately um, Ben, like, force pushes the heck out of him and then goes murders everyone. Yeah. So, but that's the difference uh, he, between him yeah. and Ray is that, like, Luke is, like, he makes that decision that, like, he's beyond hope. I can't help him. And Ray, like, finds that repulsive. She's like, no, like, like the potential was there you just decided not to nurture it or like you in that moment you you were too afraid to contemplate like it, it's like the killing the killing baby hitler argument like do i do i get rid of this one child if it means potentially avoiding the death of millions or billions of children and luke is in more in a position where that's an actual conflict for him because he's lived through a war whereas ray is just going through i guess her the very beginning of a of a major conflict that the repercussions and the long-lasting effects of she hasn't quite come to, she won't understand for years and years to come but like i guess that's what i like about it is that like everyone's motivations make sense and like, kylo ren running out and killing his community college uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey it's at least it's at least a master's program right <laughs> masters um so sorry, I, I, like sorry. That too. I, I think it was uh important to see that kind of they were both right like mm. not neither of them were yeah both of them their perceptions were wrong but the key difference was just that like luke was acting on a momentary flash of instinct and not not a, a, a full-out intention and that's yeah. obviously a very critical difference i mean small things do make a big difference in this movie <laughs> For sure. And their memories had changed because Luke remembers it differently until Ray confronts him about it. And then he has to reach deeper and realize, no, right. actually, I did think about doing this thing. And when I looked at him, I didn't see a monster. I just saw a frightened little boy. Well, is it the memory or is Very it just him trying Martin. to gloss over it, right? And say, no, here's what happened. And then he kind of gets pulled out and actually has to tell her the truth. Well, Luke yeah. has cut himself off from the grand communication device of the universe, so right. he's not aware that Ray is an alternate source of information on this. Yeah, he's and Ray's not being honest with him. Like he doesn't even realize that she's there as a force user to begin with. Like he's just like, "Oh, you brought me my lightsaber because you want me to come save the galaxy." Fuck off! Like he doesn't realize that she's there for training. Like she doesn't make that clear. Uh, yeah. What did y'all make of the cave scene, which is uh, the mirroring of Luke on Dagobah, obviously going into his dark night, like dark passage of the soul, but the imagery of her and a long line of herself, and it's like they're all repeating the same movements. Like, what is that image supposed to? And then it ends with herself. Hell, if I know. <laughs> As I don't know. Uh, it's strange because. It's like David Lynch walked on onto the set one day and J.J. Abrams was like, well, since you're here, you uh, want to, honestly. You wanna supposed to, yeah. No, my no. My husband with, thought maybe they were, cl- maybe she was a clone. Yes. I mean, maybe. You know this to be true. Yeah, maybe. It can be that or it can be, as Duncan said, the cyclical part of, of the story that every, there is a, like she is part of this good and evil fight, and she's a link. She's a link in a chain. Yeah, yeah. it's a link, link in a chain. And if it ends with her, it could you know, it could mean that it will end with her in the next movie, maybe. Because like I, that, that's the one image that I just didn't. I could not grok any any symbolic or, or narrative information from is the repeating line of her the line of, like her looking in the dark mirror and tr- at first seeing two figures coming toward her and then it's just herself like that made more sense where it's like this is what is she's being right. se- seduced with is this thing that is just outside of her vision and comprehension and if and like if she turns away from it the only thing she's going to be alone like that is that is what's trying to seduce her but it's just what came before it that i i just 
couldn't glean anything from I, it could have just been they wanted that really cool visual and like her doing the weird snapping thing and um, I, guess, it, I guess it's also a sense of just isolation and loneliness like she mm-hmm. wants to reconnect with her parents so bad and she approaches this wall and it seems like people are approaching her she pulls it back it's just her by herself again so she's there's a million of her but it's just the same person and that's I think you mean yourself is a very uh, in, mm. in, in, in a place where you expect answers is very Empire Strikes Back obviously mm. yeah, Amber I think you're onto something though it's like a bunch of copies of her and then she says i knew it was going to show me who my parents were and then it's her on the other side so i think amber might be onto something serious with her being a clone that would kind of be cool yeah i don't know what uh, like <laughs> what that would mean i just kind but... of felt that that whole cave thing ended and like looking back at it after the movie was done it was like just one more way of them being like you want answers, you don't get answers. There are no answers. Like, yeah. that, like that's kind of what every, every, all the questions we had going into this movie, except for kind of what happened at the temple, I guess. Yeah. It's like they, the, the answer was, it doesn't matter. There are no answers. You know, and I mean, that maybe felt like a fuck you half the time. Maybe it's alluding to like the sort of lost kids that we see at the end of the, or the, the orphan kids where we see like mm. there's a million of these people out there, these kinds of lonely souls who don't really know their place in the world, and and they can be you know, oppressed or used by the good side or the bad side. And I don't know, she just doesn't really know her place in the world, but like she's been told that she's part of the good side, but she's, she wonders if maybe the dark side has some answers for her. Yeah. I, don't know. I also, I also kind of, you know, uh, think that in general, those, those caves are meant to show you the weakness you have, the open openness you have towards the dark side where the dark side has his opening. And I think uh, as as Luke comments on her uh, seeking that hole un, unreserved, I think her main problem is, as you know, Ben also points out, that she seeks a family. And, and she has... She seeks answers, family, without thinking of the consequences, without thinking anything. She go, just goes f- both legs in right away. And that's her biggest weakness towards the uh, the, the the dark side. Uh, and I think that's what is also showing her, that she knew that she, she knew in her head that she would find answers, but that is the problem that she is always seeking the answers and that will lead her to the dark side. That is. And what, what does Kylo say? He's like, your parents were nothing. You're nothing, but not yeah. me. That's him trying to woo her. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's the push. The pull. His, uh... Guys, that was so romantic. That's push pull <laughs> method right there. Yeah. yeah He's yeah. nagging. That, that, that was method. the biggest laugh in my theater. That was the biggest laugh right there. That was uh, like, really? the biggest... yeah. <laughs> I don't. I hope it doesn't. They don't take that into romantic territory. It's like maybe there's a subtext there because it is such a weird and intimate relationship. But I just like that it's like a guy and a girl, like probing each other's humanity in the strangest way possible. But it's just it's it's weird. It's not even platonic. It's just it's really hard to describe. Yeah, it just, it's it would bizarre. Be, it'd be just well, easy just to make that... it. Go ahead, Duncan. It's still. I guess it's... that. I guess they're the only other people in the world who know what they're going through. They're mm-hmm. the only other people who have this weird connection to the universe and don't know their place in it. But did any of you guys actually want Ray to take his hand in that scene and actually like join the dark side or this sort of this new Ooh, order? The take his hand and cut it off. I, I, I was like, yeah. yes, like let's do this. Mm. Let's go nuts. Yeah. Let's turn Ray like dark Ray. Mm. Yeah. Well, I thought because it was the second movie, I thought. I thought they were going to go there until they started like doing a lot of promotion that was like, will Ray turn to the dark side? And I was like, well, no, that's like, yeah, no. nope. Can't <laughs> happen. Yeah. It's just, it's yeah. All this, that when that trailer came out and they were like, guys, don't watch There's So many spoilers. And I was like, so none of those things are happening. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was actually shocked at how much of that stuff happened late, really late in the movie that was in the trailer. Like, yeah. mm. like there's a shot from after we, find out that luke is imaginary <laughs> like not imaginary, so, you know so 
Did anyone notice a whole Team Jacob, Team Edward uh, thing there? <laughs> what? What? Well, did we, first of all, in, in Force Awakens, think that th Finn and Ray might have something, right? Yes. This is what no. happens when you have it's, a female protagonist. Confusing. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I've never know. You didn't think that he kind of, you know... He had a creepy fascination one. with her, but I don't yeah. think she... No. I, I didn't no, get no. it in the first one. Okay, so I, I had that feeling that, that, that he at least thought she was very interesting and she didn't really know about what, what was happening in that sense. Or maybe even had a feel, have feelings for him in that way. Uh, and then now with the whole connection be between those two, which is sort of weirdly sexual in a way, even though it's not. Um, with with uh, Ben, I'm kind of feeling that yeah, Ben is is Team Edward here, and and uh, and uh, Finn is 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 for oh, Jacob. Oh, Finn. Okay, sorry. I'm like, who is the second person? Finn it's, and Ben. Finn's, Finn's it's weird werewolf. because. <laughs> it's weird because like her interest in him is born out of pity and that she sees that he is in pain and in conflict and she thinks that she can s revert him and his fascination with her just seems like he <laughs> wants a friend <laughs> like he's really lonely he just wants someone yeah. to hang out with <laughs> <laughs> if one of those two was going to be a sparkly vampire it would be Kylo but um, yeah, yeah I, I just felt that like in the first movie, I felt that his like gravitation towards her so quickly had something to do with you know obviously the the force in her. So I thought yeah. maybe he he suspected she was someone he knew or you know she was at the temple or something. I mean apparently that's not the truth. Uh, maybe that's not the truth. I don't know. Um, we still don't. It's not really sure if he was you know lying to us or not. But it seems he just like could sense the force in her and was like another human. Like I don't know, he, like how much interaction has he had outside of stormtroopers and like really like evil commanders the last just, like that decade? A, that, that's he a good question, to, actually. Because he said they, to her, "You saw me, uh, like, and looked at me like no one else ever had. Like, she's the first person who's not in charge of him to interact with, and he just connected with that instantly." But but also, uh, that's a good point because. Apparently he left with like half of, of the students at the at the academy, and uh, well, where did they go? Just well, asking. Oh yeah, he said he left the them. Or, no, he no, took no, them. He Stan. took them. That's the, they're the, the knights. They're of... the knights of Ren. So where yeah, are but they where now? are they? Well, I thought the knights <laughs> of Ren were like the the bodyguards. Is what I had thought. But then when we get to the end here and he kills them all and they don't seem to have any force powers, I'm like, I guess that's not them. No, they're yeah. called Praetorian Guards. Yeah, yeah, I know. They have a different name. I just thought because they have like lightsabers on their weapons and they actually did some shit on like guards in the past. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe, you know, but uh, yeah, so apparently he's got a group of these former students that do things for them that we've never met. Yeah. But I'm, I mean, I'm also like, there are some shots in the in the force awakens that mm. we've been led to believe happened that seem not to have happened now, which is, well, yeah. yeah, it looks like him and the Knights of Ren, like destroying the temple and yeah. he's kitted out as Kylo Ren with the red lightsaber, which doesn't make sense. With Apparently what we it saw. was a kid in his pajamas. <laughs> yeah. Which is fine. If we had <laughs> been led Jedi to believe pajamas. that. <laughs> in the force awakens, I thought one of the people he took, well, we sort of talked about this might've been Ray and he, he sort of dropped her off on a planet. Yeah, so maybe he is. Too. Yeah, that was one of the theories. Maybe he is still lying about her, um, her being. Uh, yeah, but I mean, Luke would have known yeah. that. Luke would have recognized her if he had have trained her. Like that doesn't make sense why he wouldn't tell her that. Unless she was like a kid, and <laughs> yeah, we've talked about yeah. that in the in another uh, setting. Uh, we'll probably Luke see the, the her if this was like fifteen years ago. She'd yeah. be like seven. Well, I... <laughs> He's a Jedi. He can recognize people by force. But he wasn't using the force until yeah, he wasn't using I, the force right at the end. No, just no. <laughs> so no. So there's no way he could have <laughs> forgotten how uh, a, a specific psychic imprint on uh, on a kid would have been 15 years ago. 
I mean, yes. I thought I thought she was his daughter. <laughs> I thought that the the whole thing that was going to happen was that he like that that he was training his daughter among other students at this uh, academy, and that mm. Kylo goes crazy and you know kills killed, them he all, and so Luke believes mm. that his daughter has been murdered by his nephew, turning to the dark side, which to me was a perfect reason to go hide out on a on a on a rock for the rest of your life. Um, and then Kylo couldn't quite, I'm going into total fan fiction here, but like, yes, like the, the light in him wouldn't allow him to murder his, you know, five-year-old niece or whatever, or cousin or whatever. And then that would right. be how he had Yeah, that's what I thought. That's story that would happen. Because <laughs> doesn't, doesn't um, Snoke in uh, The Force Awakens says something about like, you know, the the one time, like, the light prevailed in you or something, talking about, like, when he first kind of converted Kylo. So it's like he did something good, you know, and, like, Snoke still gives him shit about it. So it's like, what was that? I don't know. Uh, I thought, like, yeah, I thought Ray was there. Either she's just a random person or, like, yeah, she could have been Luke's daughter. As long as Luke didn't drop her off, which people thought, like, Luke dropped her off and then went on a vacation to that island. I was like, well, that makes him a horrible character. So I hope that's... As long as that's not the issue, I don't really care yeah. what her lineage is. Do you think a lot of problems in this universe would be solved by not abducting children from their families to join monastic warrior orders? Nah. nah. <laughs> I, don't, to be fair, I don't think Luke did that necessarily. Um, I, we don't know that he abducted any of his students. They, they came <laughs> willingly at age five. Well, I don't I'm think sorry. Kylo was willing, but his parents forced you. him. I'm going to leave your family in slavery. That's not coercion at all. Well, let's not talk about Anakin because that is so beyond messed up that like, yeah. I can't, you, I mean, there's so many issues with that, but like, I, I, if I start talking about them, I will not stop talking. About yeah. Them. It was yeah. Pretty Cause well I mean, the dark, for... the darkness of the Jedi order eventually became like where they would just go around and grab kids, you know, cause Oh, they've got force powers and like you're drafted into the Jedi and here's some money and, yeah, that always was kind of like, what the fuck? Yeah, it was very, it was very glossed over in in the the first saga. The yeah, and you know what? That whole thing saga. came apart because um, Yoda, when he shows up in in Empire, is like, I can't train you. You're too old. So they're like, well, we have to make it so that we can only train them as kids. You know, George thought that. I guess that was a great idea. <sighs> yeah, like Hogwarts. <laughs> yeah. like, did you did you get your letter? Yeah. <laughs> Here, In have your game. lightsaber. Start killing things. Just saying, yeah. like they could have bought her out of slavery. <laughs> yeah, but probably not that expensive. Yeah. Really. No. Do you remember? Do you remember Qui, Qui Gon Jinn being like, "Well, I don't really have access to that much money right now, so uh, I'll never come back." <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely come back and. <laughs> No, nah, no, that didn't happen. <laughs> but then it's the whole, well, we don't allow people to have attachments, so we better leave her as a slave or else he might, like, you know, want to see his mom from time to time. If you get any ideas about leaving the program, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he'll definitely not turn to the dark side from, you know, missing his mom at <laughs> several times. And murder a bunch of sand people, you know, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, oh, yeah. Just just banned. She just was so yeah. into sexual banned. slavery. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm starting to look more favorably on those movies now that we have these other movies. <laughs> it's like, God. I know, because for a long How time, it's you? like, I, it was like, oh, they ruined Star Wars. They killed the future of Star Wars. And it's like, now that we have more Star Wars, I kind of don't feel as <laughs> badly towards them. You know what, Katie? I tried to adopt that attitude before The Force Awakens uh, when I did a, a full rewatch. And they are just bad. Like, they're just bad. They're bad movies. <laughs> hmm. They are. This, this is a, this is an aside. But Mio, have you seen any of the um, like any of the fan cuts that cut all three together? Yeah, and cut out a ton of shit. Because because honestly, Hayden Christensen bothers me so much in that role. Mm. That yeah, like, the the acting like Natalie Portman's not a terrible actor, and she is horrible in some of those scenes. Yeah, um, he's terrible. Uh, Ewan McGregor's great. You can he's, he's you, you great, can but... feel Ewan McGregor being like, I'm going to ignore whatever was just told to me and do whatever I want. And actually you can feel him being like, I'm going to do my job today. Yeah. <laughs> there is a moment in Attack of the Clones where Anakin has just brought back his corpse of a mother to the farm and he is 
fixing stuff in the garage and Natalie Portman comes in and says, Anakin, what's wrong? <laughs> like you just brought home your dead mother from the same people. And like, that was the, I get like, I'm not saying that they're not bad movies and make no sense whatsoever. <laughs> I'm just saying that I have a fondness and a nostalgia for them now that I didn't have yeah. before. That, they have, they have dialogue that's so bad that like even good actors sometimes couldn't make it work. Yeah. Oh my. Well, we all hate sand anyway. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so let's see. What what haven't we covered? I mean, we haven't really gotten into very much of old Hermit Luke and the, like, train me, I'm not going to train you, back and forth. Uh, is this what you guys expected? Like, as like as soon as he threw the lightsaber over his shoulder, I was like, well, that's what's going to that's what's gonna happen. Uh, that, that pretty quickly set the pace. And I also very quickly thought, hashtag not my Luke, uh, but he redeemed himself in the end. It's like one of those things where you have to ask three times before they'll train you. Before they'll let you convert to Judaism. (laughs) Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. (laughs) So So it's Rabbi Luke. (laughs) Yeah, she just kept coming back, you know, uh, day after day. I mean, how long was she there? It seemed like like days, uh, if not weeks. Yeah. Time, Time works differently in that part of the galaxy, bro. Well, I mean, t- the days are different on every planet, I guess, so that's true. Who are these uh, indentured servants that the Jedi have <laughs> trapped on this island? <laughs> For thousands of years? Well, and there was just like, they just, uh, the their attitude was like, uh, I have to rebuild that. Did someone just shoot through my home? Like, they're, they're yeah. like, I don't know. Ray they, almost yeah, murdered one of them. Do you know the the little guys that work in? Do you know the little guys that that uh, built uh, stuff in Fraggle Rock? They're basically for me the same kind of character. They were Ewoks. That's what they were there for. No, they're not Ewoks. No, no, they're like the creatures on the Citadel in Mass Effect that you're no, like. No, but what well, I'm we don't know what they do. They're supposed to be. Yeah. The keepers. They're called the, the keepers. keepers. They're like, well, they make sure everything be. works around here, but we don't know anything about them. We entrust <laughs> all major life support functions to these strange <laughs> critters. It's so smart on our part. But like Luke, Luke clearly is just you know like they're the custodians, and I guess. They've handed this down over years. It's fine, but did we need them in this movie at all? Like, were they trying no. to explain why the island didn't look more rundown? I, I don't, I don't yeah. know what the what the, the purpose was. was. I didn't care. I was like, what? I, I think they. I was actually expecting them to be like more prominent, and I wonder if like that might have been like a a cut, you know, in, in editing that it wasn't quite working. So the couple of times we saw them was were fine for me. Dude, yeah, it's it's Star Wars. You need, you need maybe they thought, look, we need some like comic relief characters because old man Skywalker is just going to be shitting on Ray for most of this movie. So like, we need a little levity in these scenes. Well, now they can look at their practical effect count and like the, the t- in that column, like, oh look, we made these puppets. <laughs> they, did they did they remake a puppet for Yoda or like what was going on with yeah uh, that was a practical that Yoda. Puppet. That was, that yeah, was then, so weird to me. And then it was touched up because I was like, wait, that's kind of how he looked in the original movies, but then not how he was looking when we did the CG in the earlier movies. And yeah. and then he can touch things. I was very confused by that scene. I, li- but I, liked, how goofy, I liked how goofy he was. It's yeah. more like original he, trilogy. He was goofy and more like maniacal. He was kind of an ass. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, Yoda is, is an ass. Yoda is a horrible, horrible person. He's like, no. I'm going to light this tree on fire. <laughs> oh, he so, is an like, ass. Oh, it, man. Seems that, it seems that death has not uh, cured him of the stir-craziness uh, of, of Dagobah. Mm-hmm. Nah. He's a trickster. So do you feel like he's been sitting there for like 15 years, like trying to yell at Luke? And like maybe... <laughs> Maybe, you know what, because, like, Luke, he was training the Jedi, he was a master for years, he, he obviously talked with his dad, he talked with Yoda, he talked with all the Force ghosts, I'm sure, and, um, oh, Liam Neeson could be in this now, anyway, so maybe at some point he decides to run away, and Yoda's just sitting there like, this isn't a good idea, and that's why he, that's why he cut himself off from the Force, to make Yoda uh, shut up. Yeah. So I found out what the 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 workers from Fraggle Rock is called the Doozers. I think. <laughs> Thank I think, God. 
<laughs> yeah, I think those guys wandering around the island is basically doozers uh, in the way they react to <laughs> the the weird stuff that Ray and whatever does. Like there you go, there you go, listener. Put down your. Well, tweets. they're called caretakers, and they are an all-female species, which has left some fans confused. Okay, that's fine. I don't really care. Yeah, doozers. <laughs> Get back to Fraggle Rock. <laughs> I, I knew they were doozers. I was just muted. Yeah. Um, I, I, in terms of just, Luke, I feel like like the 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 degree to which you're going to be like traumatized by this version of Luke is directly proportional to how much of a fan you are of his character period and I was never a huge Luke fan so to me I was kind of like well okay you know like we already knew that he cut himself off from the galaxy like clearly some shit has gone down mm. so it wasn't it wasn't too jarring for me no yeah I wasn't surprised at all like we learn what happened to him in the previous previous episode like he basically went crazy cut him like banished himself from the worlds i assumed mm. yet he, he did not want anything to do with this story so it didn't surprise me uh, yeah that he threw the lightsaber over his shoulder i find it sympathetic that they fought a war to end what is basically space nazism and what oh. a surprise like 30 years later <laughs> it's come back in full force <laughs> and it's even worse <laughs> Yeah, now, now they're just not. Yeah, now they're not just Nazis. They're like rem, like nostal, nostal, nostalgic Nazis. Like, oh my god, <laughs> <Not> the, nostalgic. <laughs> they're uber Nazis. Nazi. Yeah, but you see, like the thing with the Empire was that they weren't necessarily just like a uh, like horribly like racist group that like took control over the Republic. The Empire was the Republic, and just sort of overnight. You know, uh, a switch was flipped and it kind of changed names, but a lot of things didn't change for people, right? Yeah, like that was oh, the one oh. thing. That was I, the one thing I couldn't really suspend my disbelief on. Like, how did the First Order get this powerful when they started off as like fringe radical Nazi nostalgia people? Like, that makes, know, that makes more sense. To me. In real life at all. <laughs> they took but, a like, few the cruisers Republic, and built more. The Republic Duncan. fell so easily. Like one, you know. Coming but see, episode nine. The thing was is that when you watch episode three, like when the Republic falls, like um like Padme's like, oh, you know, democracy stuff. But like the Senate was kept open. Like nothing really changed to most people. Like he's just mm. like, Well, I'm declaring myself the ruler, but I, for most people they didn't realize like it was the same government essentially. You mean and then, the that it takes them true. No, That's I think after true. a while people cottoned on to the fact that the Senate was completely ineffectual and right. that Palpatine right, was, but there was doing no, whatever the hell he wanted. I'm saying there was no battle. The tanks didn't march in and say we're switching uh, the government. Except, like except, except you know, she <laughs> Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like in the prequels, Kashyyyk it was a gradual was completely process. Eradicated, so. Yeah, but Kashyyyk, that was the Republic force. These were all the Republic forces, right? And the Wookiees. Like... Remember Kashyyyk. Yeah. <laughs> well, are we talking about the prequels or the, the current movies? I don't know. I mean, yeah, because the, the prequels, the, that's the one thing I'll say. Like it was this gradual prequels, process yeah. in which it was, you could, it was believably taken over from the inside and mm. it, it was plunged into a civil war where like emergency powers were, were declared and all that. But here it's like they blew up one planet like and, then the, 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 and then the weapon that they blew it up with was destroyed. And now suddenly they're in charge of everything and no one is rallying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I mean. Is the re quick. Here, the Republic is one system and that system gets blown up and there's no Republic. Yeah. I mean, it's so depressing. They've spent the past 30 years setting up a republic, and it can be destroyed in one day. Like, what's the point yeah. of even going on? What's the point of even the, building a new republic? I guess what but, we were talking about in the chat beforehand is the only thing that I thought made sense was maybe if the republic was more kind of like the UN, and, like, most of these star systems had gone back to some sort of self-governance. And, right. yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, that, and everything was really peaceful for a while. Yeah. Okay, so I have a theory about this, and... If that's basically made it into my my own headcanon, but I can can try to uh, explain how I at least think it it went down. Tell us, because, Patrick. Because what happens when something that massive as a Death Star gets blown up? That's a giant amount of money and resources just weighing out one flying out the window. That's basically the same as terrorism. <laughs> Uh, and 
in real life, what happens is it radicalizes parts of the society. So I'm thinking that that's also what happened, that even though they it saved the universe from uh, the galaxy from, from Palpatine, and still a lot of people saw all these resources being pumped into this, being destroyed, and seeing are the you, rebellion. Are you saying that like because they lost jobs, like people sided with the Empire or the First Order? Or yeah, I'm saying that that uh, there, the the whole you you uh, just think about how many people died on the Death Star. Look at all these jobs they blew up. <laughs> not just not just how many jobs, but how <laughs> the many rebels people. are stealing your jobs. <laughs> but the thing is, how many people? It's, it's a planet <laughs> destroying. Honestly, think about this. Think about yeah. how many people. And it's people that are conscripted <laughs> and slaves and so how many how many people did they kill? And we also see in this like the first order, even though they might be kill they might kill like six hundred uh, resistance people, they killed thousands upon thousands of first order people in this movie as well. Uh, Wait, what are you saying? I'm saying that the resistance Patrick and the is slowly rebellion coming is bad out to guys. us as a first order sympathizer. I'm saying that I'm I waiting just... for the Hux voice to start. <laughs> no, no. He's, he's saying that rebels are thought of as terrorists, and that's why the galaxy's turned against them, even though yeah. they're the official Republican army. Death Star, and we're going to make the resistance pay for it. Right, but the rebels turned into the Republic, and like they went. Yeah, they, there's stuff in the, these books, right? Like they had to go through freeing all these systems afterwards, kicking the Empire out, uh, the Battle of Jakku, all that. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. it became like a, a unified effort for the galaxy, but not, um, I guess, but not the whole galaxy. As you also would have read, that there's not every single sector right. of the galaxy that is. Well, well, there are parts of the galaxy that like that were never part of the Republic or the Empire, right? Yeah, and it's always the core worlds that that end up being like the the center of the of the Republic. Uh, you know, uh, Coruscant and. Uh, what is that the other one? Uh, the one that Han is from. Corellia. Uh, Corellia. Uh, Corellia. Yeah, Corban, and yeah, Alderaan would have been one as well, one of the core worlds. But See, but uh, if it I could, before it blew up, I could maybe buy into that a little if if it was like a building that had gotten blown up. But the Death Star is a planet <laughs> bomb, like a a gun that blows up planets. Yeah, like, and it was on a remote moon, like that not a lot of people would care about. It's it was well, would have plunged the the galactic economy into uh, <laughs> depression. It just sort of forced people to build it and give them resources because they owned matter. everything. It doesn't matter. It still it still affects the economy, no matter how you do. It. Star Wars. Well, there's no economy. It's Star isn't there Wars. someone who made there's someone who made a video about like the economy of the Death Star, like how much it would cost. But uh, like the bigger thing here is that if Kylo was 15 years ago, let's say 10 to 15 years ago, and we knew like Snoke had turned him then, and you hear about these stories of Rose as a kid and Finn as a kid being stolen, so they're out there in the outer rim stealing kids and building an army. And then somehow they're okay. buying weapons from people in the core, these arms dealers on Fancy Planet and other places. Like, the Republic just sits by and is like, well, we got five ships because we demilitarized, and they let it go on. Like, mm, I can't right. believe they let them build two dreadnoughts and have, like, you know, however many soldiers they have, take over whole planets, and just they were, like, pretending nothing was going on. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. But then, then again, that's, again, that's basically what a... a uh, like a, that sort of kind of a government. government Cause isn't this all Ron Mothma's fault? Where she like after they said, well, once we defeat the Empire, we're going to get rid of like ninety five percent of the military. Probably. But Adam, what? like, look at real world history. After World War Two, the Nazis were gone. But look what happened in Soviet Russia. When I look back on that, it's hard to believe that anyone let that happen either. But. That's the power of fear. Well, but you're, you're talking about a sovereign country that already exists with the military instead of like, it, you know, it'd be more like if like uh, a, a, a wing of the German army left and went to, you know, Mongolia or something and then took it over and like built a new Germany. Like, I don't think they would have let that happen. Right. I just feel like this universe is not well constructed enough to bear up under these arguments. <laughs> 
Oh, you know what? Actually, Katie, I think you might be right. Definitely, <laughs> definitely that. Yeah. Come on, yeah, come on. And it, it doesn't Everything have to be. It doesn't out. have to be. I just. It's fantasy, guys. It's not entirely meant to hold Makes up. Makes sense. To... I, I have <laughs> so, like like that part of it. I have less of a problem with than I do the whole fuel thing and the ship can't jump to hyperspace and they're running out of fuel. When it doesn't seem like these ships ever really used fuel in the past, like these large capital ships all seem to have reactor cores, oh, like God, our, like on. all of our submarines do. <laughs> oh like, my God. like why would you? But but like but I don't on. know. Or come and on, why Adam. would it be running on empty when they were evacuating the damn planet? I don't know. You know, because science. Asking, yeah, and Adam, you also <laughs> say, do you say that that submarines don't have fuel? Well, they need fuel. Just... They need fuel for certain things, but I mean, like a nuclear submarine doesn't need anything to keep the engine running. It doesn't Don't need you... to go get gas. Is, is fuel can't fuel? run out of uranium fuel. Steel beams or something. Right, but like fuel yeah. cells and like uranium and all that, like that's not the sort of thing that runs out a lot. You know what I mean? Like you don't have, you're not worried about running out of it in the middle of something. You know, anyway. it's like a month from now you need it. Okay, but yeah, <laughs> the point is, it doesn't make sense, but you could uh, argue for why uh, they're the rebellion isn't maybe the most popular per- people in the galaxy. I was right? just sad no one came to help him at the end. I thought they'd have more allies because like, the Republic was only you know blown up a couple of weeks ago. Well, they also oh, well. only yeah. gave it like two minutes. <laughs> no, but hey, like, <laughs> like yeah. things happen fast in this story. Okay, this whole thirty story seconds takes went place by. In, like, you didn't text hours. me back. <laughs> like, yeah, oh my god, what are you, you doing? Don't up. you like me anymore? <laughs> yeah. I just um, I also thought the whole plan to go to this planet and hide up was kind of stupid because then you're giving yourself no escape and also they could just see you leaving like I don't they, they couldn't like, because they can look out the window and see you're cloaked but not like they're within visual range like you put a fucking telescope on them like I don't know I know but like, did you see how many windows were on their bridge like, so all the windows all the windows a yeah. question is is Brian dead yes She's got to be, right? Was she, she ever back. alive? <laughs> she's Boba Fett. She'll be back. Do you care? I mean, she's barely there. She was in the trailer for longer than she was in the actual movie. They they promised she would be ha- have a proper... A fight scene? Yeah, something like that. Uh, I she... did like that fight. Yeah, yeah. it was good. But I hope yeah, Wendy and Christy have, had this line in like a feature at that, like, this is the most physically demanding thing I've ever done. And I'm like... You thought the hell. Wearing the, <laughs> wearing the costume yeah. is probably the most physically demanding thing. He bit your yeah. ear off. <laughs> I I think I uh, basically hope that she's coming back, but just burned or something. Like that. That's that that's part of her. I'm surprised that people on that like at the end. What do we end with Kylo telling like Hux that you know let's get down to the surface? And I'm like that ship is split in half. Like how is like everyone on that ship not like hurrying to evacuate? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's a big it's ship, so I guess. Large. It's when so you, large. When yeah. you say hats, There's are you huge sections of it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Is that who that is? Yeah. Oh, and another shout out uh, to someone who's in this movie that will matter to us. Um, Lysa Aaron. Lysa Aaron's in this movie, yeah. Kicking ass. And she's, and actually kicking great, she's actually great in this movie. So. Who is she? She's the. Uh, she was uh, on the bridge in the Dreadnought. Yeah, she's remember. one of the. She's like one of the. One of the. I don't know. She runs. She does something. She does she something. <laughs> she does something. She's not the storm. She's, I don't know you know the one in Star name. Trek that's like on screen captain or whatever. You know, like. Yeah, but she's in a few scenes, and is she she she's there at the end, right? When they're in the uh, in the walkers or whatever. Yeah. But I met her on an elevator once. She's very nice. Oh. How? What? Oh. Where? Well, this was at this was at like the Con of Thrones. Like she was there for that. But I just like we were in we happened to be in an elevator and she got in the elevator and like we chatted for a second. And oh, did very you talk nice. to her about breastfeeding? Yeah. No, I did not. I just told her I was like, oh, I, you know, loved you on the show, etc. She was chance. she was super nice, like not at all crazy. <laughs> no, I, I was like, I could have sworn you were going to be crazy. But, uh, she was yeah, I think I might have even made that joke. Too. So I just seen her in an episode of the Doctor Who show. But yeah, I know, like she, like she was like around the con, like she hung out with people. I think she like might have even like. You know, like went and like got drinks with some people or something at one point. Like, she was super nice. Okay, so guys, I need to go to bed. It's like Patrick. Oh, I'm so yes. 
across the pond. The, is the, the problem with this movie is that I honestly feel like you could talk about it for hours and hours and hours and and not know exactly what you feel. Maybe that's just me. I might be projecting, but I but, really have. I'm so confused still. I think so that's point, a fair my, my ending. But my ending point would be that that is what makes it awesome for me. Yeah, yep. I think it's. Good night. I think it's. <laughs> good night, Patrick. Good night, Patrick. Good night. Yeah. I think it's challenging and rough around the edges, kind of the way Empire was, um, which also wasn't very well received. Um, That's right. At the time, Empire was kind of shat on, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because it didn't do. It wasn't that... like the grand adventure of the first one. It was more darker and. I think they'll change over time. Too, because like for me, Return of the Jedi growing up was my favorite one, and when I look back on it now, I'm like, it's kind of silly. Like some of my favorite parts of the whole franchise are in that movie, but on a whole, it's not the best one. I think A New Hope is probably my favorite now, and it was probably my least favorite growing up. Did did your guys crowd or your audience cheer when uh, uh, Ray killed? No, um, Kylo killed Snoke, and Ray yep. grabbed the lightsaber. No. Oh, oh, we yeah. got that a was huge amazing. round of applause. Yeah, there same. was very minimal reactions I think, I think in I my audience. Cheered with that. I was like, yeah. Like I just yeah. Like and that the and best the, part. That and the spaceship slicing open got a huge round yeah. of applause. I loved it. Those two moments. Yeah, even that got nothing. There was like an audible kind of whoa, but it was the energy was really flattened out of my room about 20 minutes into it. And yeah, and it was the good. third showing of the night. Thursday night. Really? That's a shame. Yeah. Harsh. That's weird. Yeah. It's I mean, good, like, it's um, a good crowd movie. And, and there was a lot of, like, mega fans. I mean, there's plenty of people dressed up. I was dressed up. My kid was dressed up. So there were some huge fans in the room. And in our crowd, it was not well received, I don't think, at all. Mm. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe the audience, like, you're but by the reaction. a fan, like, you have too many expectations, or maybe they read too much online, or I don't know. Because, like, I saw it Thursday night, and, like, it was, it seemed like a more casual crowd, but, like, they were super into it. It was just so different from a For- The Force Awakens. I mean, we were in the very first showing, so it was the mega, mega fans. You know, everybody was dressed up, and the, obviously it was the first one in however long, so the energy was really high just to begin with going into it, but... I mean, it got a standing ovation at the end that, like, people were applauding, and the credits were ending still. You know, like this one, people were leaving immediately Hmm. and there was minimal applause, you know, I mean, really light chuckles here and there. No real cheering at anything. I think at the the end, people seemed very deflated. And I think that's kind of the way I felt like I was so pumped through that, that ending. And then when I, when I saw them all, I'm like, oh, there's like 10 of them left and they're all in the Falcon. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, I think that's what it was. It's just like, what is but, going on the whole time? And then afterward, it's like, what did we watch? But the final act was great. I mean, the the final act was was intense. Uh, the the battle in the yeah. throne room, Snoke dying. That was uh, great. Wondering yeah. what was going on with Ugh. Luke, not like just standing there getting blasted to hell. Which I I was like, okay, this is a new thing. Luke Superman, and it, I, I, a lot of people hate the fact that he did the whole uh, you know projecting across the galaxy thing. But I, I, I think that kind of redeemed it for me because I'm like, OK, so now he's not, you know, Jedi aren't invincible. He just was pulling a very clever trick, which, you know, he did it from like an ancient place of Jedi power. And it seems to have cost him his life. My sister was very upset by that. She didn't like the movie, which was a bummer because it came out the night before birthday. Um, but uh, like I, I, I keep trying to figure out why I'm not more annoyed by by astral projection Luke. And I just... I'm fine with it, I guess. It, it's like, yeah, we haven't seen it before, but it, it doesn't seem to me like the type of thing that would be impossible with the Force. You know, we have Force ghosts, so like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah. didn't bother Same. me that much. The throne room They, gra- they gradually set more. it up, right? Because uh, Hux gets Force pushed from across the galaxy, and then Yoda's dead, but still, like, you know, whacks Luke across the head and calls down lightning. So, I mean, they've definitely... I felt like the Force Awakens, you know, in, in, in the last movie, and because of 30 years, you know, CG were able to do a lot more than in the original movies, so these guys have more, you know, access to greater powers, I guess. But this felt like the yeah. Force was, like, unleashed at certain points. 
So. We see variations on it, and if anyone's going to be able to do it, it's Luke Skywalker. Yeah. And I mean, it's, the fact that he was I mean, in the process of dying in, sort of implies that it was kind of a ghost being projected out, and it's like halfway. Yeah, between, I mean, if you want to read the movie that way, like he he kind of has one foot in death yeah. the whole time. Like, you know. like he well, much he is a master, though, it. right? And yeah. none of these he's, other people he's are the like force he is prodigy a master and all this stuff. So. And I mean, but like, think of some other th- silly things that Jedi can do. Do you remember in the Phantom Menace when Qui Gon and Obi Wan like were the Flash and had super speed for a minute, and we never see a Jedi do that again? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, yeah, it's kind of hard for really the course. High. Yeah. I I I also I'm like, I don't really. I kind of wish that there had been something more there visually, but I really did like the conversations between Rey and Kylo, and I think that it leads. I actually. Sorry. Well, I, I just think it leads really well to where they both decide to end up in the movie because they do both make a conscious choice. Like, Ben decides that he is going to continue pursuing power, uh, having kind of considered all the options. And Ray, having considered all the options, decides that she's not and she's going to go carry on what remains of the Jedi. And I, 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 I like that they keep kind of going back and forth with each other on the merits of kind of the, these these. Yeah. ideas and yeah their mm-hmm. fight scene was I, where they were fighting back to back was just oh, oh was, so oh, good oh, so crazy. amazing when she tosses like, him the uh, lightsaber to kill the final guy like uh, oh yeah. savage oh. like for Daisy a song, really i can... believed i believed they would both become good god i love daisy no. really so much she can roar which i love she just screams and We've already mentioned yeah. it, but Adam Driver just has this physicality, just like brutish and bowls those guys over. It was tremendous. What were you going to say, yeah. Hannah? I, oh, I was just going to say, I actually really liked the decision um, in the cinematography with their, as we you know, put it, mind melding thing. I like that they are not showing the other side of it. I just thought it helped emphasize the singularity uh, mm-hmm. and mis- mystery of it. You know what I mean? I just... I thought it was more powerful that you don't. There's no like, pullback, and you see them together. You know what I mean? It's so in inside their own mind, and I kind of like us being on the outside. I think there was some really great choices with the camera work that helped tell what story was there. And to yeah, me, that's the strongest thing of the movie is the cinematography. Except for in the fight scene, I was disappointed. I thought when they started fighting back to back, and it was a wide shot on them. I thought, cool, we're going to get a fight scene that's not a bunch of quick jump cuts. And then immediately after I thought that, it started doing quick jump cuts. I'm like, damn it. But I guess that's Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of the fad, but I still thought that was I still thought that was shot very well. Overall. I thought it was really like almost like a ballet. Just the movements mm. were so slowed down and like complemented each other. And they were back to back and moving like in perfect balance together and helping each other and. And just like the fury underneath in their performances and the the redness of the room and the the nights was almost just like blood oozing out in every direction. It was so full of anger and fury. That one dude fell in a pit and got chewed up by something. Yeah. <laughs> Little and the of lightsaber kid. through the head. So good. That was And when so she drops good. the saber and picks in like catches it and slices him open. It was really a lot brutal. of amazing moments. That was like a oh, lot of really it. amazing moments. I think even you know Ben's fight with with not there Luke is amazing. It's just like a lot of it is postponed for a really long time. Yeah. See, this is this is why I'm I'm kind of like I really enjoyed the movie when I left because what I came there for was see the continuation of what's happening with Luke, what's happening with Leia, what's happening with Ray. Uh, Kylo, all that, and I felt like all of that stuff was great. Like I, re- I, I really enjoyed that. I thought it, it, the, like I was, I was on that journey. You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, like when I, uh, when I get this on DVD, I might skip through a lot of the scenes. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Skip that casino. Um, plot, yeah. I, I did really like to in uh, when Snoke tells her to come closer and drags her to him. How they go to a tighter shot on both faces. So you really do feel that uncomfortable closeness and just his fucking face. Like Katie said, this wrinkled testicle, like right (laughs) at the camera with the little hairs and the pores. I mean, it was just so nasty and it's 
it made me uncomfortable, and have I really seen, liked that. You know? <laughs> I mean, have you guys seen like the the Snoke action figure they made? Yes. Is like he's That's just got like a. Foam, yeah. It, yeah, it it looks terrible. And then if you take his robe off, it's like a female action figure body that's like way so too funny. slender. Like they just reused like a Barbie body or something. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck is this? Oh, like, gross. <laughs> Andy Circus, though. Props to Andy Circus, who is just amazing. It's yeah. good that they got rid of that like character, too. though. I Oh, I agree. Yeah. I think it's actually yeah. really interesting because. It, it works in complete opposite to both of the other trilogies where, like, we've had this, like, bigger bad, you know, uh, on top of, like, Darth Vader and on top of Anakin. Um, and now it's, no, it's just, it's just Kylo Ren. And I think that's really interesting. Yeah. I mean, because, yeah, you're right. Like, the, um, like, uh, the Emperor never was really, like, the prominent, the prominent figure Mm. That's what I mean. That's yeah. one of the big surprises of of Empire that you find out that Vader is definitely not the guy in charge. Yeah. So what's what's Kylo going to do now with no one to neg him? Well, there is Bill Weasley. I mean, Bill Weasley seems pretty. Yeah, he's not. He's lost not his cool. ability to to challenge him. I think now. <laughs> <laughs> like before, it was like he's kind of outside the power structure. I mean, sort of like I guess how they talk about how Vader was not part of the Empire, but. You know, he's Lord Vader, and so he sort of, sometimes the generals seem to order him, sometimes he orders them, you know. Uh, now he's just in charge of everything. I think it's funny how when Kylo was laying unconscious and he went to grab his gun, you know. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, we, we I, talked I wonder, about that earlier, did, where he was, like, oh, thinking he was going to kill him. Yeah, yeah, I was just wondering, like, if Kylo actually knows, like, he, he felt it and is holding it as some kind of trump card later. Nah, I think that was he he was too busy. I feel like he thinks so little of that guy anyway. That (laughs) I'm just glad that Hux didn't die. That's that's all I say. I love it. (laughs) Well, it's an interesting it's an interesting parallel too between like Luke standing over him, contemplating killing him while he sleeps, and then that guy. Well, uh, something that I was a little bothered by is that like we don't see Ray escape. We don't see her make that choice. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I like. I guess because they didn't want to show how that happened or whatever's going on there. I don't know. Leaving us a little tense. Because yeah, I mean, Ky- Kylo has pretty much killed all his like parent figures at this point. He's killed yeah. Han. He's he's pr- sort of helped kill Luke. Killed Snoke. He didn't kill his. He, like he couldn't pull, pull the. Trigger he made the choice brother, not but, to. Ki- not to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was the one thing he held back. But I don't think like he he's, knows he's unfettered that... now. Like it's a, it's not like Darth Vader where he was all the Palpatine where there were these old grizzled war veterans. He's young and he's unfettered and you know undisciplined and it's going to be maybe this more chaotic evil. But I I don't know I don't know where like Ben is going because I I think it was really important. You know Leia has that line like I know when a son is gone and then you know Spirit Luke is like you know a son is never really gone and that like. They could go any number of different ways with this, but I, 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 I would not necessarily be like. I mean, I think Kylo Ren is is going to be the major villain of the, of the final movie for sure, but I wouldn't necessarily say that it's like all evil all the time, you know. For, for <laughs> yeah, because I felt his main motivation yeah. wasn't like I need to kill the universe, I hate the light, I'm evil. It was more like I just want to be my own boss. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, also, Adam like, Driver is too good of an actor, honestly, to 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 waste that, to like, inflict that that um, much of an unsubtle motivation on him, in my opinion. Like, also, what the hell did Luke mean? Like, what what are we gonna see of that when he's like, if you strike me down in anger, I'll always be with you, just like your father. Well, I mean, like, that's there's what, that's no what, payoff with that. Well, his father's with him in spirit. Like, he'll be with Ray in spirit. Um, maybe he can show up in Force Ghosts, annoy uh, Kylo. Hey, does Anakin ever show up and talk to Kylo? I don't know. Because, I mean, that's the same line, of course, Ob- Obi-Wan says before he disappears in A New Hope. Yeah, and, yeah no, I know. And then that, that materializes as him, you know, he's become one with the Force, and now he can, you know, see all things and have chats with people. I think everyone's powerful. very aware that Kylo, 
uh, is not the most stable of folks, I think you could say fairly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that, that that is part of what Luke is, is leaning on. I mean, it's also possible that he's talking from his own experience of like, I kind of was tempted to strike you down in anger and now see what's come of that, you know? Yeah. But that might yeah. be, that might be giving the line a little too much credit. I don't know. I, I kind of hope that the next movie sees like, maybe it opens up with Kylo, like putting down like a mutiny of like, you know, a faction of the first order. That's like, we're not following that guy, you know, um, like cementing his power or something. Just another note on the visuals. I was just reading the AV club review and they, um, they were pointing out there was sort of quite a few, oh, sort of references to like samurai films which were a big influ- influence on um the original yes, star yes. wars so you've got the the really striking red color palette both in the throne room but also in uh on the salt planet when they're sort of dragging their cruisers along the along the surface it almost looks like you know like veins being cut open like these kind of red marks that are bleeding across the the battlefield yeah. um lots of so lots of sort of operatic showdowns in in throne rooms and vistas um, the Russian style flashbacks we get with Luke, uh, exiled warriors, and also the the image of the um, the dreadnought being sliced in half is is almost like a like it was sliced open by a samurai sword. And it, it it reminds me a lot of like you know like anime series like Cowboy Bebop where you just get these moments of like frozen time where something gets sliced open. Um, so it felt very, yeah. Yeah, very and I mean, Bina, Bina mentioned that it's very, it's very Kurosawa. Um, and right, I wish yeah. Bina had been here because she had quite a lot to say. But maybe, we'll, yeah. maybe I'll see if she can record a little, a little something, uh, edit it in. But uh, I think, I mean, the original, the original trilogy was was also um, influenced by some of those, you know, same samurai movies and um, just the, the whole aesthetic. You know, I, like I'm seeing people complaining about the whole red salt thing i'm like i thought that was a that was a great visual oh i can't say enough um, good things about that planet. yeah i thought that was you think that and... guy was bleeding at first though when he first walked up there and then the guy licks From it i'm feet? like why is... yeah i'm like why, why i thought like he had a wound that was like dripping down his leg or something and i was like why is this guy licking his blood and then he says like salt and i uh, oh you wouldn't want to get a wound on that on in that battle <laughs> yeah oh goodness Goodness, no. But it'd be sterile. Um, <laughs> well, it would be painful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, work pointed out how it was cool, like the falcon in the mineral mines. That was so reminiscent of uh, Empire when they're in the asteroid and all that. Like that was. And the uh, second Death Star, though, so when they're going down the. the yeah. It's too, that ship is never big enough to go into these little holes, but they do it every time. <laughs> I don't know why, but Chewie's a good pilot. That's all I gotta say. Chewie's and then they hate that ship, so they immediately start targeting it. I like that. Like the the Falcon is just this kind of legendary nemesis for the Empire in the First Order. Yeah. So the Resistance now Rebellion, which probably always should have been Resistance, is a weird name if you're resisting something that the government doesn't exist, doesn't believe exists. Um, so now they're decimated. They're going to go somewhere, do something. They're probably going to be at an old rebel base that we'll recognize or something next time. I don't know. Um, They're basically the rebels now. It's rough. Yeah, it's rough. So they called for help and no one came. Uh, But maybe people heard that call and, you know, they were trying to come and just haven't haven't gotten started yet. So maybe um, Luke was interrupting their Wi-Fi connection or something. Yeah, (laughs) because at at the last moment, it's like they hear something and then Luke's there. But. I, I thought the weird part was when we find out Luke's a ghost because they were like, well, how did he get in? There must be a second ent- an exit. And you're like, oh, no, he didn't need an entrance. <laughs> but uh, the yeah, the, the crystal creatures find the way out, which is, which is fun. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Speculation about where this is going, I feel, is kind of pointless right now. But J.J. Uh, Abrams is coming back. So, I mean, if that's anything to clue us in on, I feel like that he might uh, he might change a few things here that were done in this, um, I and there was, was interesting there was that room it, for him to do that. So, I thought it was interesting that it didn't really end on a cliffhanger. Like it kind of finds a resolution in terms of okay, this is what's left of the rebellion, and we'll start rebuilding from here. But it's yeah. not like it's like a new sort of uh, new 
play, playing board. Yeah, like we, we could do that. We could do the big time skip, like you know, like we were saying earlier. Yeah. Like you could flash forward ten years at this point if you wanted, and you could have Ray with you know maybe some students. You could have them rebuilding an army. The First Order controls the whole galaxy. I mean, they can kind of do whatever they want here, because there's not a lot that we, other than you know whatever's going to happen, what they do with Leia. There's not a lot directly after this film that has to be accounted for, like the last film. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys for joining us. And I, uh, I'll try to get this out fairly quickly. I'm sure people are, are seeing this and wanting to talk about it and either being super happy or, you know, going into a fit of rage. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this was great. And, uh, follow us on all the things that are out there, the Twitters and the various things. And, uh, may the force be with you. May the force be with you. May the force be with you. Together? Live long and prosper. No, not that one. <laughs> a lot of freedom. Yeah. That past season's in. So. Yeah. That's that's how I view it. You know, they tried to force that thing to happen because they're like, fine, we can just make another property work like we did Gardens of the Galaxy, and uh, <laughs> instead it was such a colossal oh, God, failure. No. Yeah. 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 And I didn't I make it through the second episode. How bad humans is like. Hmm. There really aren't words to express how bad in humans is. It, yeah, and what sucks is that like those characters could be great, you know, uh, they they could at least fit into another movie or something and be enjoyable, but I don't know, it's so, so confusing. All right. All right. Good night. Good night. Take care. Bye. Later. Bye, guys. Yeah, yeah, okay. You guys ready? Hmm. Who is whistling? That's me. Michal. Oh, okay. I was like, <laughs> I was like, it says Michal is going, but I'm like, that actually sounds really good. Oh, uh, I thought, so I mean, not that, I didn't mean it like that, but I meant like, I was like maybe you're like, there's something in the background. Anyway. I'm an excellent uh, whistler. It's one I'm of not. completely useless talents. I don't understand whistling. I'm not good at it. Yep. Accents, obviously, are my thing. <laughs> 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 Shut up. Okay, let's <laughs> let's get going. May the force be with you. Oh, am I the only one repeating that? Okay. <laughs> good All right. Me on. May the force be with <laughs> you. Together. Live long and prosper. No, not that one. <laughs> I'm just glad the Inhumans thing didn't work out. That's oh my god, that was a nightmare. That was an actual <laughs> nightmare. It was so bad that it forced Disney to be like, hey, can we just buy the company that has the <laughs> X-Men? <laughs> like, <laughs> right? We've got enough money to do that. I like that version of the story, actually. <laughs> That's... I give it... I give it... <sighs> ooh, I get four... I give it three and a half uh, weird milk nipple things. You give it like two blue milk jugs and four blue milk jugs out of five. Both things. I don't know. I was I'm I am having a hard time trying to figure out your rating system, Adam. I honestly am. I liked parts of it and the the whole the whole plan does, of the of the Admiral doesn't make sense. Poe's plan doesn't make sense. No one's plans make sense. Going to the fancy planet doesn't make sense. Um, Snoke kind of makes sense, you know, but then he was like deceived. I guess that's how badass Kylo is. I'm cool with that. Like, pretty much all like the Jedi stuff was cool. Um, oh, yeah. I loved everything with Luke. Like, Luke, Kylo, and Ray, everything that went on with them was like, mm-hmm. was intense, was great. And then it would just drop me back to, oh, why are we in space, Monaco? What's going on? Poe has to mutiny like five times and Finn needs to like run off to get something and it'll kind of be pointless and get everyone killed. Um, Poe mutiny more than once. 
Well, like, so he, like, when the movie opens, and he's like, fuck it, just send the bombers. Like, he's disobeying orders. Mm-hmm. He, just, he, like, keeps disobeying orders. Oh. Like, the whole time, he's just like, fuck it, I'm going to do what I want. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at the end, we're supposed to be like, see, she had a great plan. Uh, they're all just going to sneak off to this nearby planet where no one's going to ever look for us. And you're like, uh, that's not a great plan. Like, none of you have a great plan. <laughs> like, like Kylo's plan, or uh, Poe's plan sucks, your plan sucks. This, it's like they introduced in this movie about like a dozen problems that never really existed before just to just to have something to do like technological problems and things that were like this is not how Star Wars has worked but okay like fine and then they also don't necessarily follow through with that I mean you know Star Wars it, it creates its own like you know science and logic and then doesn't really stick to it so that's kind of that's kind of how it goes I mean, I've always seen it as science fantasy, so I've always been yeah, like, exactly. yeah, exactly. not fuck the rules. It's not hard science. It's fine. It's fine for We're them space to space like, wizards, make, you know. It's, it's fine. fine for them to do weird stuff like this, but it's weird for them to write themselves into a corner like this and be like, oh, uh, well now, like, yeah, you can never get away from them. You can never get away, and we're just gonna slowly follow behind them when we <laughs> could easily catch up and kill them, like. Okay. Well, their sublight engines are faster than the last uh, the first. Right, but but again, they've got like thirty ships. You send one ahead. You send the fighters out. Like, you know, it's it's weird that they were suddenly like, all right, we're just content to sit back here and slowly follow them. Maybe they were just enjoying it. <laughs> they they like, turned on the ha-ha. they turned they turned on the lights and were like, oh, we, we can't try to pull them over. It'll be too dangerous. They're going too slow. <laughs> Well, and where's Bina? <laughs> uh, Adam, I don't recall. Uh, what are your overall feelings? Like, I know Paul and I are quite positive. He's like half and half. You thought that there was a, a plan for these, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so JJ was talking about, you know, after the force awakens is like doing interviews and like, Oh, you're going to, we don't Oh yeah. Snoke's backstory. It's great. We're going to reveal that. It's going to be great. Race parents. It's really important. It's going to come to be really important race parents. And, and then it seems like Ryan Johnson, they were just like, Oh, do whatever you want. And he was like, I don't care about that shit. Fuck it. doesn't matter. <laughs> and you're like, what the hell? <laughs> like I would assume that you had a few like major plot points you have to make. And then you can kind of work within that. But I think, you know, I mean, we don't know if Kylo is telling the truth about her parents. And JJ yeah. could easily be like, "That's bullshit," but um, but it definitely seemed like a disdain for the audience, like the way a lot of that was handled. You know, I I mean, I didn't really like like loser Luke who kind of let the galaxy die, but I also loved Mark Hamill and everything he was doing. So yeah, I mean, it's it, I think it'll be like the Phantom Menace or something like that, where like I'll just skip through him. large parts of it and watch the stuff I enjoy. Don't you ever compare anything <laughs> to the Phantom Menace. How dare you? Oh, no, oh, Attack of the Clones. Attack you. of the Clones. <laughs> uh, I hate red sand. It gets everywhere. I thought he okay, just hated all I'll allow it because I sometimes watch just like the Battle of Geonosis and go, oh, it's cool. Yeah, I mean, that's super cool. Like uh, the lightsaber ba- duel between like uh, Qui-Gon and Darth Maul and Obi-Wan is like maybe the best lightsaber battle in all of Star Wars. I wish they had kept Liam Neeson um, around. I think it's yeah. the Kylo Ray fight, personally. Oh, the Kylo Ray fight. Don't when he, like, started. steps back it. and, and like, they're back-to-back, and he steps back and, like, pushes yeah, her up, like, and then she kicks somebody. And a Jedi back-to-back yeah. while fighting. So that awesome. looks... Yeah, it's super, it's it's super great. I mean, that's the, the choreography, the set design. Like, it looked great. It felt great. It just, I don't know. You just weren't a fan of the, some of the plot points. I, I just, it could have been, like... It, it was structured in such a way as to just kind of make it feel stupid. And like, you're like, and then like, it's like, I get they're trying to be like, well, everything they do is pointless, guys. And they all die. And you're like, yeah, because there's like 20 of them left at the end. If they had just all taken whatever like light speed capable ships they had and all gone in different directions, more of them would have survived. Like, like it's crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, you've, you've, you've set up a rule that, you know, is going to make it really hard to write in the future and really hard to kind of have Star Wars how we've had it. So, See, I don't, think, I don't think they're necessarily setting up rules at all. I don't really think they care, which I don't 
find personally disturbing, but it's like, if that never comes up again, having, being able to track during light speed, like, yeah, but it most people would be like, it wouldn't Why aren't surprise they doing? me. It, it would, it would come up again for people. They'd be like, well, this, we've lost them, sir. No, you haven't. Use your light speed tracking shit. You know? Well, like, but maybe they it, had it, to. It go would pull through, people out of it. Maybe so. they had to go to great extremes, like maybe it was a one in a million chance that they were able to get that on their. Maybe ship maybe anyways. it was actually it was all it was all on uh, it was all on <laughs> the supremacy. The, yeah, the. So that was the only right? ship with it, and. I don't know. But maybe Snoke's, it just requires well, a Snoke's lot of ship, energy. Snoke's ship wasn't even there originally when they left. Did you notice that? Like when Not they that, escaped. Yeah. Right. But then, like, it seems that they go onto his ship to disarm it, and his ship oh, is the oh, one yeah. that gets destroyed. Okay, now that um, doesn't make sense. Now it's a little weird. It. But then, like in the beginning of the movie, like when like Snoke contacts Hux, he's like, "Oh, uh, I'll take it in my office," and he just mm-hmm. like puts himself onto the bridge from halfway across the galaxy, force pushes his ass to the ground, right? Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of long range, you know, Luke at the end. There's, there's a lot of long range stuff going on here. Uh, I loved Luke at the end. Yeah, I thought I actually thought when it revealed that he was back, he was actually back on the island. That made it better for me. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay, okay, because I was like, why the yeah. hell he, they're how shooting him and nothing's to... happening? Yeah. But I it makes sense because little... like he didn't disturb the ground and like you, yeah. I was a little disturbed the first time with his brown beard and short hair. Like what the fuck? He took time to like go to the barber before he showed up, and then I was like, yeah. "Oh, okay, that's." Fine. I was like, he looks different. Like, yeah, I guess in, <laughs> in hyperspace he groomed himself, and, and he then, has like, a lightsaber which was actually well, torn in half by Kylo. Well, and Ray. that's why I was like, he's got a blue lightsaber. Maybe he built one like that. Maybe he went back to blue. But I'm like, hashtag green lightsabers anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, that part I was like, why does he have a blue lightsaber? It can't be the same one. So what's going on? There were well, all these little of, clues, but you're so lost in the scene. Like I did right. not, you, you never thought that's what was happening um, until the end. Yeah. And then at the end, I thought I saw a little something when he's he's staring off into the sun, like it's supposed to be Tatooine. Like I thought I saw like a ship or something, and I'm like, oh shit, I thought they were coming him. to him. Coming I thought it was him. like Ray or something. I don't know. <laughs> I thought like maybe the, the first order had sent someone, and this is how he dies. And I mean, he died anyway, but not. <laughs> what not I liked that was way. that they were. He was projecting the image of them that or the image of himself that they all would have remembered. And I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Luke Skywalker, like to, the legend. Yeah, to bait Kylo Ren even more. And... <laughs> well, no, I mean, like, distance-wise, like, at the end, they're going to fly from that base for my... Like, going at top speed for, like, ten minutes and yeah. then just walk back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had those yep. little nitpicks, but they really didn't diminish my enjoyment and actually by the third time i didn't even feel like it was a little long which i did the first couple times the third time you've already seen it so i gotta see it again i've, I've uh, seen it three twice times already twice we had, mm. we had intended to see it twice and then just had the opportunity to to see it again and my guess is we'll probably see it one more time maybe in like the 40x i still need fun. to see it with my dad over christmas so that's Aww. already a requirement uh, but yeah, like, I mean, the only really thing that kind of made me annoyed was, <laughs> like, with the explosion, I'm like, wait, where's Akbar? He was right there. <laughs> Honestly, I would have much yeah, rather. Yeah, they're all dead. I would have much rather that Laura Dern's character just be either someone else entirely or just not be there. Like, I would have much preferred if it was, like, Admiral Akbar, because you expect, like, him to be, like, the. He does have a plan, but he, like he doesn't, he's not owed anyone an explanation because he's fucking yeah. Admiral Ackbar. And, and if it's a trap, he'll know it. But like, <laughs> well, did he know it or like now he will because he's learned over the years. But um, no, I just like everyone like on the cast was like, oh, I loved her character, and I'm like, I hated her character until the end, and not because like she had a great plan. She didn't have a great plan, but like you know the sacrifice and everything. And why the fuck wouldn't she just like tell them? At, like no one's communicating yeah. no one's no one she's not being like look here's our alternate plan this is plan she was we're power try tripping to go to. Mm-hmm. um and poe's not like well actually i have a good plan maybe can we try that like you know uh, like he didn't even tell them hey they're tracking us through hyperspace which i guess should have been obvious i think it was kind of obvious that's how they figured it out because no one actually told them that they just guessed <laughs> so stupid <laughs> 
It was a little silly. I completely. I mean, I'm it. glad. I'm glad all the rebels <laughs> died in the end because they should have died right away, anyway. Mm-hmm. If the first order was competent. <laughs> yeah, considering that they should have a million billion Tie Fighters, like they really can't. They're pretty ineffectual. Yeah, I mean, like they sent like maybe a dozen. It looked like, and that basically <laughs> crippled them. And then they were like, "Oh, call, call off the attack! Call off the attack! Uh, we gotta. It's it's not safe to go out there, guys." And it's like, like you like have slaves that you brainwash basically, and you care about their lives. Like I don't know. I liked uh, the holding for General Hux thing. I just oh, loved it. Was it was amazing. I, if Poe starts out every movie with like some wisecracking, with like <laughs> the talk villains. First. You talk first. Yeah, if that yeah, I'm like, I'm, I think it was it was right on the border of being too much, especially with like the scene that came right after it. But I, I did enjoy it. Yeah. yeah, I think it's just so right up, like a hundred percent what I find hilariously funny that it doesn't even matter that it's kind of like silly and yeah, and well, Hux you know, is Hux just Hux the is best. Supposed to be serious, but well, Hux, sur- Hux survives, yeah, but and that's kind of all that matters. Hux is also like super gullible. <laughs> <laughs> like socially, that is like he doesn't. Because I've much. I've read I've read the books. I know where he's he like comes the thirty from. year old CEO. Well, where does he come from? Uh, it's basically the entire aftermath books. You meet uh, Armitage Hux when he's like a little kid. His dad's like an abusive asshole because he's an illegitimate kid, uh, and his dad is the one in charge of like the brainwashing procedures when they're first yeah. starting the first order. Oh, but, okay. Uh, so I only read the first makes, book, so yeah, he makes a uh, uh, pact with the founder of the First Order, Admiral Sloan, and she's like, "All right, I'll protect you if, like, you protect me." Because, uh, like, towards the end of the Battle of Jakku, this guy Gallius Rax basically grants uh, um, Armitage like c- full control of these uh, brainwashed uh, orphans they had captured, who are like the proto stormtroopers. And as like a like eight year old kid, he tells one of the kids like beat up the other one. So he's already used to having like power in the situation. So like he has never really had to converse with anyone other than giving <laughs> orders. So like when he's being tooled with, he's like, ah, he obviously can't hear me. That's the problem. <laughs> so good. <laughs> You know Yoda was just sitting around waiting for Luke to be able to see him again all those Somebody years. pick up my call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Puppet Yoda scared me for a second because I'm like, oh my god, what's wrong with his face? Yeah, and there's and something... Went, it's, oh, thank god, it's it's just it's, Frank Oz. Yeah, it's this weird uncanniness. But um, it, did, it did crack me up that, like, you know, Yoda's back and then he can touch you and then he can blow shit up. And then he's like, the books don't matter. And then like, <laughs> because Ray the took them. <laughs> it's like, oh no, don't Luke, don't go in there. You don't want to go in there. I'm gonna blow it up before you can go in there. <laughs> uh. Like, damn. And just this, just the whole setup of the new trilogy where they let the first order build fucking dreadnoughts for some reason, you know, while pretending that they don't exist. That doesn't make any sense. But uh, okay. The Republic gets attacked in one system, and that's it. They're, they're done. There's uh, no Republic. Anymore. They kind of explain it in uh, Leia Bloodlines, the book. It seems like like the Republic is just really shitty now. Like the old Republic like controlled everything and was all over the place, and the new Republic is like, well, we've got one planet, and everyone sort of agrees to be nice to each other. Like yeah, they like they don't do any governing. It's all like everyone's like self-governed now. Well, yeah, because like Mon Mothma is like, okay, now we're just gonna decentralize and. Uh, we're going to reduce the military quite a bit. And yeah, I then, remember in, in Aftermath, she's like, we need to immediately take like 95% of the military force and yeah. dismantle it. And I'm like, oh God, this is <laughs> this is such a bad idea. Why would you do this? And like uh, in Bloodlines, you find out like, because this is like years after Aftermath and like everyone finds out Leia's Vader's daughter. And it's actually a really good book. I definitely suggest it to anyone. But uh like, there's this whole thing where, like, there are two parties, basically. There are, like, the staunch kind of Republicans who, in this case, are the good guys. And then you have the uh, centralists who, like, are were kind of wishing the Republic would be kind of like the Empire again. 
Except, oh, you can Man, vote back now. In, back in the day when they ruled with an iron fist. Yeah, like, well, like, the centrists are like, oh, yeah, now, uh, like, this empire, is, this uh, government's going to have, like, full control over every planet. And then Mon Mothma's like, no, no, this is kind of more just like a United Nations kind of deal. And then the centrists yeah, are like, they also, okay, also well, then set up funding, the, uh, right? we'll start yeah. sending funding to this uh, imperial, like, startup group. So we that was they, on, they start sending. We money found them on GoFundMe. We found them on GoFundMe. We've uh, we've been financing them. Oh gosh. <laughs> I mean, who, who remembers Borgullet? I certainly don't. <laughs> Borgullet. <laughs> Did you come Borgullet here? will make Ryan Johnson talk. Did you come here <laughs> to kill me? <laughs> who are his parents, Borgullet? <laughs> oh my god, just tying Rian Johnson down to a chair. <laughs> oh god, like, we know the truth. I mean, like, the answer that her parents were just, like, junkies and sold her into slavery is fine, but, like, that doesn't explain why she's Force Genius, like, and why Kylo was immediately, in the last film, like, a girl on Jakku, what? A girl, mm, that the girl seems thing, interesting. Yes, but I mean, there's no explanation <laughs> for why Anakin was a Force Genius. Well, he was yeah, like basically point, they, he was space Jesus he, he because was, he, he had no father because Darth Darth Plagueis impregnated oh. his mother with the Force. Yeah, I forgot like, about that part. <laughs> there's literally an cut answer. that out. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Like, you know, uh, when they're in Snoke's throne room or whatever, and he is monologuing, at one point he says. Uh, oh, something about you didn't kill Skywalker. This he said the seed of Skywalker lives. Does he? And I don't know if that was just some random thing he said. If he was talking about Luke as the oh, was he talking about Kylo Skywalker in this movie? Yeah, yeah. I don't remember him talking about the seed of Skywalker at all. He said those words. Just wasn't he say really quick? Uh, it was when he was talking. I'll about watch Kylo, it again. Right? Well, when I watch it again, I'll have to listen specifically for Skywalker seed. And maybe he's talking about Luke is because he was like, you failed to kill Skywalker. Maybe he was just saying Anakin's seed is still alive. But I was like, oh, what does what does that mean? Who's he talking about? <laughs> yeah, like, I don't. Yeah, I know. I just but, said that other dumb thing, but he really did say that. <laughs> it, I'm trying to remember. That was like when he first comes back, right? Like he's in the throne room talking when to he's Snoke. with Ray, when he's oh, with, when he's Ray. with Ray. Ray. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I have to see it again. So, Paul, check it out. All right. <laughs> I'll get back to you on this. Riddle me this. Well, when I watch it again, I'll have to listen specifically for Skywalker Seed. Okay, well, first off, I feel like you are just giving, like, very poor arguments towards my thought process. <laughs> Wait, it, it's mean? almost as if this is what a character mean? assassination, but... Uh, I like I liked that little hat he was wearing in prison, and the way he walked as well. It was a bit. Jack oh, do you know what his you know what his name is, right? Don't no. join. DJ, oh, yeah. don't join. Oh, don't that's, really? That's his name. That's his name. I just his called him DJ. The thief. His name is DJ, and he says it stands for don't join. Don't join. Really? He says that. <laughs> that's what Me he too, said. That's well, I know he hat. says like, because that's like, what it says on his hat. Oh, all right. Well. Still, Benicio del Toro is like amazing, and yeah, I mean, I like Supreme Leader uh, Whiny Baby Kylo. I, 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 think <laughs> that's, I just want, I just want to know what his plan is, and if it's gonna mean more taxes or less taxes. Does he look uh, like a guy with a plan. That's what's really important. <laughs> yeah, how much am I gonna pay on my yacht? <laughs> See, I was. Can see, I still sell the you? The first order establishment was bad enough, but then you get this populist first order guy, and oh god. <laughs> oh boy, right. he was well, the joke Sith. We didn't think he could win. Anyway, um, <laughs> he was. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, all right. Well. All right. Good chat, guys. Well, thanks anyway. Say hi to Bina yeah. whenever you. <laughs> I was really She's hoping doing... to like face her down. <laughs> She's off doing posh and important things or sleeping. She couldn't. Too. She couldn't be lured to the dark side by you. Probably taking a bath in Ferrero Rocher. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. Oh. Apparently, we're done. <laughs>
My the ghost, man. the ghost child in your house is kind of freaking me out. <laughs> Just a little bit. You're done. All right. No more Roche for you. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, done. guys. <laughs> You're done. Is that your what? ringtone? <laughs> Like yeah, I'm getting a yeah. phone call. I'm, all, no, I'm, all right. so I'm all right with you just ending the like full yeah, podcast yeah. with just that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he heard he heard that you guys thought yeah, it was funny, so he's gonna road. say it like a hundred times yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I'm a yeah, little terrified. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, he's tur- yeah, sounds he's like he's getting angrier. Yeah, yeah. Is he floating? Yeah, yeah. <laughs>